Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Conservation Commission meeting for August 6th. This meeting is being recorded and can be found on our website as well as the YouTube channel. Uh, first on the agenda is going to be reorganization. Uh, we do have a couple of new members, Gary Vecchioni, and we also have Katie Grace, Grace Dudley. Dudley. Thank you for volunteering your time. So I'll open up nominations for chair. I'd like to I'll nominate, nominate myself. <laughs> okay. Um, we have one nomination for Gary. And do we have any other I'd nominations? I'd like to nominate Tracy for chair. Okay. We have two nominations. Okay. Will um, any other nominations? Nominations will be closed. Let's hear uh, all those in favor for Gary as chair. Say aye. 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 Okay, we have one aye. All those in favor for Tracy, say aye. 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 Okay. Whoa. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> You're not going to make this easy for me, are you? <laughs> We're going to have fun with it. Okay, so I'll, <laughs> I'd like to open nominations for vice chair, and I'd like to nominate Mike Greco as my vice chair. Any other nominations? I'd like to nominate myself. Okay, Gary. All right, so any other nominations? So um, I'll hear uh, all those that want Mike to be nominated as vice chair. Say aye. 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 And Gary, sorry. I appreciate okay. your motivation. <laughs> okay. I can see how this is going to go. That's fine. Congratulations, Mike. We have both been on the board. Um, I've been on, I'm going on 11 years, and Mike has been here, I believe, over four years. And Gary, this is your first meeting, right? It is. Okay, all right. Just to, for the record. Um, and then, uh, Steve, did you want to take 121 Maple first? Yeah, why don't we just do that with these people here? Yeah. Come on over to the table. <coughs> Thank you. You can state your name and address for the record. Cynthia Murphy, 121 Maple Street. Um, my husband Bernard is here, and my neighbor Rich Fenner at 125 Maple. Okay. All right. We were uh, affected by the recent tornado. Mm -hmm. We have a ton of trees down in the back. Mm -hmm. um, I know my lot and probably Rich's is affected by wetlands, mm -hmm. and we're wondering what restrictions, if any, will be replaced on us as far as cleanup goes. Okay. Did you prepare any plans, like a sketch of? the location of the clearing, um, the brush that's fallen, of course, you can tidy up, but we just want a, an idea of... We have far more than brush, 50 to 60 trees each. Are more they down properties. already? Oh, yeah. Most okay. are down. Uh, okay. Either down or most they of the way down, down or half down okay. or Team broken. Rubi Team Rubicon was out last week, and yep. they dropped a lot of the hanging, swinging, mm -hmm. tilting, twisted stuff. Okay. Um, but they cannot work on anything close to the house. So we probably, on our lot, we have at least six more trees that have to come down. Okay. Uh, Steve, did you grab their septic? Is, did septic. you have a file? I have my plot plan. Yeah. Let's take a little photos? look. Yes, please. Yeah, that's good. That's your septic. Okay, let's open that up. <laughs> it should have the wetlands in it as well. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I see a little flagging. Flip it over. Nope, just put the whole thing in there we go. <coughs> okay. So we'd like an idea only so that you don't continue the clearing. So right. obviously there was, you know, a natural disaster. So um, you definitely want to make it safe and clean it up. But we want to see just how close you are. Um, maybe, Steve, well, did you take any measurements from the house location or... No, we, it's really hard to navigate back there because of the <laughs> amount of wood on the ground. Okay. I mean, we've got full trees, we've got four and six foot lengths of trunks mm -hmm. that are this big around. Okay. When do you think, so could you have the trees that you want to take down marked, and when do you think that you would want to cut them down? As soon as possible. There's one directly behind the house, it's maybe 20 feet off the house, that the whole half of it, the top part, is okay. hanging. Okay. So, where's the house? I'm trying to uh, locate myself. Where's, yep, so where's it's uh, Maple Street? This is Maple. Okay, so this is. Uh, this square right there. 
that one. This is the house. Okay. Okay, so this is the house. So this is uh, all in back in this area. No, nope, they are on the side. That's the side of the house? Yep. Oh, okay. So it's all back in here. Yep. And so it continues on over, over here to my yeah. house and, yep. and behind uh, the fenners. I am very bad at distance estimation, but mm -hmm. if they have our driveway at 150 feet, mm -hmm. I would estimate that the damage goes from the back of the house about another third beyond the length of our driveway, so maybe 200 feet. Okay, so and that's straight back. Your back right corner is 100 feet to the well end. Yep. Okay, so do you estimate that you're going yeah, to be 50 well, feet? We're well past that and up to pretty close to the house. There's a tree right over here mm -hmm. that um, has a hanging the whole top of the tree is basically hanging. Yeah, so the damaged trees are one thing. It's the ones that are you cutting any down? Well, the big big that thing is are not is damaged. We're going to have to bring in heavy equipment, right? And they're going to go tromping right through mm -hmm. around this way because this is where the septic I was is, say, yeah. and they can't go that way. So they have mm -hmm. to go all the way through the wetlands and then back up. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest concern we have. Because the wetlands are this way too. Well, it should the remaining not trees that are near the house that need to come down might be able to be gotten down without heavy equipment. Mm -hmm. You know, a professional tree Climate. might be able to yeah. get them down. Mm -hmm. But the concern is for everything that's on the ground already. I mean, we're fine with on the ground. Okay. But the machinery, it there's going to be It would require machinery to get what's on the ground yeah. out. Right. So, I'd like to see the limit of where the machinery is going. We have to have some a ballpark because we can't just let you take the machine and go wherever. Could you, you excuse want. me for a minute? Tracy, what's the protocol for asking questions like through the through the presentation? Is it okay to ask questions? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, excuse me. Do you have a question? I have a couple. Okay, go for it. All right, first thing is um, you mentioned something I think that you said work other than cutting trees that were there. Did you say that? Is there any dirt? Well, we need to have the trees and the stumps and maybe not the stumps, but whatever is on the ground taken out. But mm -hmm. are, So are you saying that you want to excavate stumps in the process of cut, removing the trees? Are we going to? No. No. We just okay. need and to get heavy, the, well, heavy machinery. There's one stump that's immediately behind the house. It's humongous. It would be great to sure. get that one out. But what kind of machinery are you referencing? We have no idea. No we don't idea know. yet. I mean, We're not experts. I would say skitters or whatever they... Someone mentioned that the least expensive option to us would be to just have a logging company come in and harvest all the wood that's on the ground. I would assume they would have skitters and large chippers. And, mm -hmm. and why didn't you take advantage of Team Rubicon while they were in town? They cut it up. That's all they do. All they did all was they do? I, I don't know. I don't know anything about that they process. They dropped everything that was still standing so or it's swaying. So to clear up the rest. Yes. Yeah. Anything that they could handle. They can't handle... Um, Anything stuff close to way the up in the tree. Sure. And do you feel this is an immediate need for you, or? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, you you don't want to do it after the wig so gets dried out. We've got some out. pictures, right? Or by the time it snows, it'll be a nightmare. Yikes! <laughs> and that starts like 20 feet behind the house. Yeah. Steve, have you been out to that site? Um, We have no intention of developing the land behind us. Right. We just want to get the wood out of there. But we need clear boundaries. You, you're looking on for a dimension where, of because when where the we're tree guy go. sees a nice tree and it's 20 feet from the wetland, there, even though it's maybe not exactly in your cleanup area. So I need to know what your cleanup area is. You can pretty easily estimate off of this plan where you're going. I mean, you can just make a copy. Take some measurements and take, yeah, I okay. mean, a hundred is from, you have a cart path there? Yeah, but we can't find it right now. Well, that cart path is, is well, original. I think it's from like 300 years ago. In? Can you oh, find yeah. that cart path? Maybe. We, like as we a wouldn't, stopping it's point? Buried. It's buried. We wouldn't, we would have had a hard time finding it before the storm hit because of the growth. This was okay. drawn it's, up 25 years ago. It's a little bit ago. past the cart path on this side where the trees were destroyed and then it goes at least a football field length, if not more, yeah. towards yep. Rich's property. Yep. Are you the butter on this side? Yes. Okay. I, I don't have my plan. Right, right. But, mm -hmm. 
Um, Steve, you've been out to the site. Yeah. Um, are you able to measure 50 feet off of that house at all yet? Well, you can, you can get an estimate. I, you know, I think most of the damage, it's hard to walk back there. Yeah, right, right at the this point. The wetland is to the right of the house where the driveway is, the little hollow. And then yep. like yeah. a lot of trees were taken down way. where the wetlands were probably flagged. Yeah. Years ago, septic septic this is the guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this one. here. <coughs> the, well, the septic's over here. So you've got this. Right. You've got this flagging here. Right. Yep. And then the line up there. Yeah. So I think any, everything we're immediately within a hundred, you know, probably within there. So we could we could do a distance, but you know, they have that hundred foot mark. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know how far back you're going. But you, they got a lot of trees. Like this, just I'm standing right in their back, pretty like within yeah, five and feet I'm of their back. I'm yard. comfortable with those getting cleaned up, yeah. not stumped, unless the stump is falling over. Well, that <laughs> large the tree is right. falling over. That, that large stump. Yeah, there's one. Yeah, I mean you're gonna park the machinery, but if you're outside the 50, and no machinery stored within the hundred, um, it, it's, you know. An act of God. I mean, you can't Steve's leave it like that. Should happen there, or no? Huh? Should we get Steve's opinion on what he thinks should happen there? Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, my opinion. I think immediately, they, you know, I don't think it will be any harm to, to pick up, have a have a vehicle going there in the upland area. It's dry. It's a good time. Of outside year. the fifty. Outside, you know, outside, you know, from, from the fifty or you know, from the house back, probably about 50, 70 feet to clear all that stuff, make it you know, as safe as possible, and then maybe the two prong approach would be to come back. Once it's cleared, mm -hmm. and come back because there's still some trees standing. You get some concerns about some trees along the driveway, which look dead, and come back and once once you can see the site a little bit more visible, mm -hmm. maybe file an RDA for the second prong when you're actually going to be lopping trees and maybe clearing some trees that are still standing. So the tree, that tree that you see standing vertical, mm -hmm. can you see that? Top, what looks like brown at the top. Mm -hmm. That is the top of the top of the tree hanging down. <laughs> so we need to leave that standing until the stuff on the ground is cleared up. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, what is the I distance? That's, that's been damaged. Mm -hmm. you know. Are you feeling it's a safety risk? Yeah. 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 So why not hire a tree climber instead of a machine to get those things to the ground <coughs> and then do what Steve says was a two-pronged attack? I, I could look into that. I'm just trying to do this for as little money as possible. So it would be cheaper if you could get a logging get truck in there and the logger would pick up the stuff. Get one if company in there to do everything. that's um, all dry. Right. Right. So we yeah. have a number from right. that back right corner is 100 feet to the wetland. Yeah. If you think, if you roll it off or you tape it off at 50 feet, will that cover the damaged area? No, but it would at least get it 50 feet away from the house. There's probably close to 200 feet of damage back there. Oh, well, that's a, within the Tracy, wetland. Another, so another mechanism would be, you might not get someone out. When do you plan on having someone out there with a meeting in two weeks? Yeah, so 20. So you can file an RDA tomorrow, the end of the next meeting. Yeah. By the time you schedule someone, request and they go out there, for you, can have a, you can have a permit to do the work by the two weeks from today. Yeah, I would be more comfortable with that only because of logging crews, you know, they want to make sure they know where they can go and where they can't go to. Um, 200 feet back, you're within your 100 foot into right. the wetland. Are there children living in that house? Grown children. Yeah. No, no one under I 18. I think <laughs> she should get emergency um, relief to take the, the leaners, we call them widow makers, take the widow makers down and possibly use a skitter with a cable instead of a grapple so that they don't have to go in and out and pull that stuff back to the safe area. Well, she comes, I mean, there's the 50 foot. There's enough work, I think, within the 50 foot to take them. Yes. I mean, did they tell you how long it's going to take? I haven't talked to anyone yet. Oh, okay. I was trying to find out, could I even talk to someone? Right. Oh, of course, yeah, of course. We were told by one person that um, there are people around. Hurley did a lot of work out in the state forest out on 16, mm -hmm. some clearing a few years back. Mm -hmm. His father came over and spoke with me uh, the day after it happened, and he said, my son may be interested in going back there and cleaning that all up for a very minimal cost because mm -hmm. he chips it all up and delivers to Murrayville Electric Plant okay. and they burn it. Yeah. So it's not like he's got to try to sell the firewood. Or it, that, whatever he chips up is already sold. 
Okay. So he goes in there for basically his labor cost. Um, and he just has a truck And he just a pulls out truck. truckloads of it already chipped up. Yeah. Haven't been able to get a hold of them yet. Okay. But we, like, to, again, we wanted to know if we could do it. So that's, you know, it's mm -hmm. kind of, we're in nowhere land right at the moment because we don't know what we can do, what we can't do. We have one option on the table, but we haven't had a return call yet. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's kind of just like in the beginning stages and we don't mm -hmm. even know where to go with it from here. Mm -hmm. Perhaps he hasn't returned my phone call uh, because of the wetlands and he possibly could know that it's wet back there. I mean, and maybe he doesn't want any part of it. But I don't know, I'm just... Yeah, we don't know. You're, you didn't right. bring any plan with you either. Right. Um, is your back, backyard wet? Nope, well, not until nope. you get way back. Couple right. hundred feet. Right. Well, there's a little, there's a, like a little brook, mm -hmm. and it goes right through behind all our houses. But mm -hmm. it's seasonal. And I think that's where the wetland is. Now. Any trees it's down considered. around the brook? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The oh yeah. Covered. The whole thing is just it's a mess back there. Mm -hmm. The brook, I you, I don't you think can't you can even find, find it. it. Yeah. I would suggest you let them do anything within 50 feet of an estimated, you know, vegetated wetland, and then in two weeks do what Steve said between now and then. For the RDA for the rest. Do you like that idea or not? I just want Steve to verify that it's 50 feet when and no machinery be stored within the hundred, so they can't park the machinery in the backyard. So 50 feet. But they can they can use it in that area. Yes. Yeah. As long as they don't leave it. 50 feet from the corner of the house. So. Not from the wet. Well, it's, it's the same where the hundred feet is, yes. Okay. But I'm sure it's easier to tell where the yes. house is yes. right now yes, than, it the, is. than the wetland. Okay. So you're looking at the machine going as far back as there. Yep. All right. So and they, I they think don't want the machinery parked there in case it leaks oil or... Oh, oils. yeah. No, so we understand. Good. You know, we just, you know, yep. we want to clean it up. And then you'll be filing the RDA. I would suggest copying this plan, yep. talking with the logger see where they're gonna clear because you have some ties that you can use Mike, from that plan. Yeah. So basically we would kind of like this demonstrate on the plan, yeah, on the copied yeah. plan, yeah. where it is that we want to go and... Mm -hmm. And then I would say no stumping on that. Just leave the stumps. Yeah, I know it's not gonna look great, but from the 50 over to the wetland. Okay, but within 50 feet of the house, we could stop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, could I get a copy? But under the RDA. So right now we're just right. clearing with I, the honestly, machine. Honestly, I don't think I'm going to be able to get anything done until I can bring one company in to do it because I can't afford to pay two different people. Well, they can also help you too. See, just you would just take a tape and measure yep. it and say, I'm going to go to here. Yep. And they'll be able to look and then you can tell us. Yep. And we'll get them in as soon as possible. Okay. If they want to start the 50, 0 to 50, they could do that too. And just so you know, most companies do not handle the stumps in that size and do the chipping. It's a separate. Yeah, all there they want to do. Yeah, all they want to do is get the wood. There are companies that do both, but just keep in mind, you may have to do this. In two se separate. Right, so okay. the first time is to get your place livable, workable area some breathing room workspace. So all the down trees within the 50. And nothing on the side, right? So we <coughs> see the... Well, we've got damage on the side, but I'll deal with that, I guess, as a separate issue. Yeah, so from the house, you've got 66, so you could go to the 50 okay. on the side of the house as well. Well, then wouldn't that well, put them within the... Yeah. Yeah, because it's only 67, so like... Hey, why not but the this side? But is all, this is all driveway, right? On this side? No. Oh, the driveway is, is... Oh, right here? Past the... Oh, okay, right driveway here. The driveway is here, so which gives them a clear <coughs> shot to the side of the house, but your wetland edge... Do you still have the stone wall here? It's in there. Yeah, it's, it's under. It's in there. Yep. It's so under everything, but it's on in on the there. left side of the stone wall, on the side where the house is, is it messy over there as well? It's lar large trees. Uh, they rolled most of the logs over the edge of the stone wall. Um, I think, do we still have those two trees? Are they standing to the left or to the right of the stone wall? It's hard to the tell. They're right along the driveway, basically. No, but the, the ones by the shed. Oh, those are on, they're, I think they're 
If this is the stone wall, I think they're like right, right, be the right behind the stone wall. So if the machine is in the driveway or in this space, the side of the stone wall, yeah. it should have the claw that comes over and the machine can stay outside the wetlands and pick up the wood that's in the okay. wetlands. Yeah. So you're going to be able to pick up all that stuff close to the driveway because the driveway is obviously good. Yep. Yeah. So yes, they can... <laughs> yeah, so far the driveway is good. Now coming towards the street on the driveway, I've got caterpillar dead trees and last snowstorms, hangers, but we'll yeah, deal so with them as a separate... Stay to the left what, of the What's the problem with going on the, the sides of the house if it's within the 50? Well, it's a lot closer at 67. The closer yeah. to the wetlands? Yeah. yeah. Wetlands that come up the right. side So to well. be within the 50, oh. they'd have to be within okay. 15 <laughs> feet of the house, so it's real, it gets real, real okay. tight. So I think, in conclusion, we're going to be 50 feet away from the rear of the house and stay on the side of the stone wall. Okay. So we're on trying to side. stay like 50 feet away from the wetlands. On the back side. Correct. And on the side. No. Well, no. <laughs> we're, we're estimating using the stone wall 50 okay. Okay. as a right. reference. All right. Um, and we're hoping that gets you where you need I to be. I just don't want the trees Steve, to take out my, uh, my electrical lines. Call Steve lines. before <laughs> you have anybody with okay. a machinery there. Yeah. Right. And you meet again on the 20th? 20th, yep. Mm -hmm. And how soon can the RDA be? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. We need to advertise. But we need to move on. Sorry about that. That's all right. Sorry we took That's so okay. long. That's okay. So you need to have a plan. Steve <coughs> will let you know a plan showing clearing, proposed clearing right. for the RDA. You'll explain the, ex the process for the RDA? Yep. Great. Okay. Thank Good you. Luck. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are you going to be quick? Okay. All right. Um, 7 p.m. discussion, wetland restoration, 50 Southwest Main Street, Lawrence Bazile. So this is pretty much just a check-in with the board Correct. on your progress? Yep, okay. pretty much. We finalized the restoration plan. Okay. My name is David Feist with McClure Engineering. Mm -hmm. I'm here representing Larry Basin tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, basically, we submitted uh, back, I think, on July 9th, the revised plan uh, based on Art Allen's comment letter from earlier this year. We responded mm -hmm. to his comments um, and also received a response from Art. We were I believe we've successfully addressed his comments. So we to the commission, I guess, for your Okay, so, and we do have an open uh, violation right now, right? That we didn't issue a fine for. Um, I, know, I believe it was a small fine, but again, I was last fall. So I don't believe we decided yet, right? No. Okay, okay, so let's clean that up first. So Mike and I were there on the board. So um, I'll entertain a motion to uh, issue a $100 fine for the violation at 50 Southwest Main Street. Larry Bazile, do I hear? So moved. Okay. And I think. Can we vote with any background on this? And is there discussion first? No. Uh, yeah, you can have discussion. Yeah. What about yeah, the I have motion a question. on the floor? Sure. Sure. Uh, I have a question. Uh, who um, delegates the fines? Who decides how much they are? Um, we typically do it as a board. Um, is it's there a, a ceiling? 100 foot. I mean, a $100 <laughs> fine. Is there a ceiling? No, I don't believe so. Yeah, there is. Oh, there is? A what day, three hundred dollars a day. I think it's spent a day yeah. for violation. But the violation is only if they're actively working, right? So if we found something going on, it's just a one-shot deal between one hundred and three hundred. Yeah. And if they work another day, it's another three hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Um, is the violation on this site? Yes. Do you want to just go over mm -hmm. the sure violation quick. really fast? Yeah. Basically. Um, there's a drainage ditch that runs through the property. Some drainage from Southwest Main Street from the road drainage runs across Mr. Beasley's property and down to Morris Pond. Um, last fall, basically it excavated out an area within the wetlands. As soon as that was, as soon as we were notified of that, we stopped, we informed him, we stopped work on it. Uh, we had Marion DePinto flag the wetlands mm -hmm. um, and identified the area in question. Uh, basically the solution to the was after several meetings with Art Allen and the commission earlier in the year was to basically restore the area back to its uh, original condition as much as possible um, with basically just a loam and seeding 
uh, the disturbed area, taking out all of the man-made materials, pipes and so on, um, and revegetating it with uh, a planting. Uh, basically, Marianne DePinto put together the plant list. Um, and basically this. That's been all been done, or that's what you're proposing? This is what's being proposed. And once it's approved by the commission, then Larry can proceed. Who does she work for now? Uh, herself. She's at Three Oaks Environmental. If I could just uh, add a bit, Art Allen, uh, Commission's peer review consultant on this project. Um, so I was involved last year in reviewing the, an ANRAD that was filed for the larger property to determine the <coughs> wetland boundaries. Um, in that process, I noticed an area over here on this side of the existing house, number 50, um, the applicant's house, uh, where there was some work ongoing and a wetland that had not been delineated. Um, once we took a look at that, uh, we had, I had seen an excavator parked in that area. Um, so I brought that to the Commission's a attention in the process of, uh, of commenting on the larger property. And then, then we took a step back. The Commission decided to issue the enforcement order, and we've been negotiating on the, the who, proper risk. Excuse me, who asked for the peer review? Uh, that was the Commission. Mm -hmm. What was so different about the site that a peer review was? requested um, so um, I can't really answer that I mean I, I think I the Commission Steve uh, saw the aerial photo and it was uh, showed up as a, a basin um, a wetland basin oh you, okay. you mean the peer review on the, the larger wetland boundary or, or well, the yeah why was the peer review called in because the project was so extensive it, to uh, begin large, with large yeah. property so there was project. a project so there I'm was Peter, a I'm Peter Fenn the applicant's attorney the peer review was for a larger project on the other side of the property where he was proposing um, a, an electrical generating uh, solar facility and they were doing I think uh, an ANRAD on the whole project and this was picked up as part of that. This wasn't originally part of that process but it was picked up. So the peer review wasn't for this. And this basin that you guys mm -hmm. tried to put in, is it inside Wetlands Art? Correct. And I'm just curious, and remember you're on TV, why did you think you'd get away with that? I wasn't involved at the time. I can't speak. Uh, I'm asking this gentleman here. That he wasn't involved. Was involved. Oh, you weren't involved either. Yeah, because nope, nope. it just seems so blatant. You know. We agree, and that's why we want to remediate it to the commission's satisfaction right now. Yeah, I'd like to vote for a three hundred dollar fine on this. Well, let me add a piece to that. The wetland probably was at least in part created by the construction of a culvert on the road by the town which is directing what was prior, probably sheet flow, now down the road and into the culvert onto my client's property. There was probably a wetland there before though, though it's hard to know because they are so disturbed. There are apple trees in the middle of the wetland which don't usually grow in a wetland and probably a farmer 50 years ago had an orchard there. So this situation of the wetland there was probably in part created by the town many years ago and there is directed onto my client's property a lot of water coming down the town road from both sides and they were trying to address treatment of that water before it went into the pond. That's why they were working there. They should have had a permit to do it. They didn't realize that. So the reason they were doing it was to try and alleviate a condition and prevent pollution and siltation of the pond. This That's it's all subjective on. though. We can't know that at this point. Mm. We know what we know now. Yeah. I'm trying to give some context, not not findings. It was but all I'm saying is so when you ask why they were fish. doing it why they no. Sorry? It was intended to be an ornamental fish. No, that's below it, actually. But, but yeah, they were trying to do something ornamental while treating the effluent. But they should have come to you, no question about it. Mea culpa, they want to storm address water. it to your satisfaction. Not effluent. Stormwater. Stormwater, okay. sorry. That's storm, right. Untreated stormwater coming off the road. And so they were trying to treat that. They should have come to you. Nobody disagrees. We're trying to remediate okay. it out of your All satisfaction. All right, so I've got a motion. I've got one motion. Do I hear a second for that motion for a $100 fine? And the motion was for a $300. Yes, fine. you made the motion. Okay. Um, I guess the motion is going to fail. I make a motion that the fine becomes $300, and I need to ask a question have you or Mike seen that site? Yes. Okay. I and I'd like to have um, afterwards Steve's view on what should happen here. Okay. Because I tried twice to go look at it and I couldn't get a chance to see it. Okay. All right. All right. I have a motion for a $300 fine. Do I have a second? And I make a motion for a $100 fine. 
your motion already failed because I could not I, get a I second. <laughs> I hadn't made a motion. Well, no, I suggested the motion. You so moved it. We oh. could not get a second on that. So it's we <laughs> also can't get a second on the 300. Right. Okay, so... I have to pick one. Huh? Do, we <laughs> <laughs> do we need some more information before we issue the fine on this violation? I don't think we need information for the fine. I, I definitely need more information more to see what's going on out there. Okay. As to because are they here just for the fine right now? No, they're here to update us on... They did not file yet. Have you filed yet? Uh, no, I believe at the last meeting we were told this would be handled as an enforcement order and to prepare a plan for the restoration, Art would review it. And that's where we are. So are you feeling like you're going to just bring everything back to normal or you feel like you want to do a notice of intent and go ahead with the original plan? They're going to restore it. That was Could the, I ask why? That was the agreement. Um, the uh, commission wanted it. The commission didn't. Well, didn't remember we're a new commission, so yeah. I'm just we're asking. 50%. Don't cover yeah. something over if you're going to come back uh, another month and say, you know what, we'd like that water garden there. Yeah, that's clearly up to them. Their their decision in meeting with the commission was to restore. Well, I can't. I don't speak for what he's presented here is kind of what we proposed previously. Do you like that idea of covering it over? As the alternative, compared to the alternative. It's a yeah. restoration. And did you did you read it? Yeah. No, just go ahead and give me a view of it. So <laughs> replanting of native plants, resetting up the wetland boundaries. You know making it look like it, it would have naturally. Yeah, all I'm saying is, you know, you made a mistake, you're going to pay a fine, hopefully $300 worth, and uh, I think that if it's in your heart to, to use it as a rain garden or what you're originally going to do, I would support your application to do that. I don't want you to cl close it in and put up, you know, shrubbery and vegetation and all that. If in your mind it's your property, you'd prefer to see it as something else. We so prefer to restore it to the commission's suggestion. If we ever want to do anything else, we'll file appropriately, come back before you. We have no intention this time except to restore this in the manner in which the commission asked us to do it. We made a vegetation, previous, I mean, at some point we may need to address, if we need to, where this water is coming from and whether it needs to be treated in some fashion. Mm -hmm. But right now all we want to do is restore the disturbed area per the commission's suggestion and their consultant's suggestion. I can't argue okay. with that. Okay, so Steve, do you have anything else? I cannot hardly see you every time I'm looking at you. <laughs> so you need to give me a little input on this. Well, the history of the project is, you know, there was a violation that was discovered. Mm -hmm. That was the, along with an ANRAD. Mm -hmm. I think we still probably want to address the ANRAD portion of it. We can talk about that after. And so during that whole process of, of just reviewing the ANRAD, the violation was discovered. They came forward. It was agreed that there would be a restoration plan as part of the enforcement order, which they complied with. And they met, you know, they, they, anything the commission asked them to do, they put the plan together. Art reviewed it. They went back out and reviewed it. So we're at the point now, just everyone's agreed to what they wanted to comply with. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you know, with some meetings being canceled and, and, and the, you know, that we're at this point now, we probably would have been at this point maybe a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Excuse me, Steve. Plan. So this is what the commission asked them to do was the restoration plan mm -hmm. defined by, the, I believe, the applicant and the commission. Okay. And this plan has erosion controls and all that stuff in place and Those. and everybody's okay with the plan, Art and Steve? I've reviewed it. Uh, this is the second iteration and I'm in agreement with everything they're proposing. So do we have to address the fine issue, then address this plan, or how does um, what's protocol? I think that if our consultant is um, agreeable with the plan, I think if you want to look at it at all anymore, but that's I just wonder what the order to, was. I'm trying to get a motion that will uh, get seconded for the fine. So I we will can second the motion this. for the $100 fine in light of the Restoration Act. That's off the table. Okay, so let's let's start over. Let's. Do I hear a motion for the fine amount? I'll make a motion for a $100 fine. And I will second that motion. Okay, so the motion's been made and second. And any other further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, opposed? Could I abstain or should I, do I have to do? Sure. Okay, and a question before I answer. What happens if it's a two to two tie? It's never gonna be. Why? <laughs> I don't make ties, I break them. Oh boy. <laughs> wow. 
Um, uh, nay. Okay. Two to one. Pass this for the hundred dollar fine. If you could bring it to Maria as soon as you can. We will mail it in tomorrow. And please let Steve know when you're going to start the restoration, right? And what then you'll the be back. You'll be back for the ANRAD. Um, I believe the ANRAD, the commission issued a denial on that. So at this point, um, we still have to talk. So that's where we are on it. Yeah, so, so, so the, Excuse me, it's my understanding they were you were going to roll the, the remaining mm -hmm. items in the delineation into the notice of intent for the for the project. They just go right to an Correct. Correct. That makes sense to me. Because they were there mm -hmm. were some there were some straightforward mm -hmm. issues I had. Mm -hmm. I think we we're all in agreement that they could be easily rectified mm -hmm. and that you would there was no point in refiling the end. So, so for clarity, clarity we voted on a fine. Does this plan go forward from tom I, tomorrow? I believe the commission would have to vote to accept this plan to rectify the enforcement order. Yes. I, okay. I All would right. suggest. And you're on board with everything they've uh, done? I am, okay. yes. I vote that we accept the plan as uh, are <coughs> stated and as uh, presented. You make the motion. Yeah. I make a motion. Second. Okay. Mm -hmm. way they the Motion's the been made and seconded. Questions? No one showed up on your end to continue the meeting. That won't happen again. No, but that's the reason. <laughs> okay. Right. We'll, we're going to refile as an NOI. Okay, okay so I have a motion on the floor. Excuse me. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Oh, aye. Okay. <laughs> You're good. Thank you very okay. much. <coughs> Please let Steve know. They'll give him an ample amount of time. If anybody wants to see it, you can get a hold of me or Dave. We'll get you out there. Okay, so hard. Right. Okay. Once yes, this is done, you're out of it? Like, like from here, you're done because you've waited on it? That's and correct. And they now build it. Un until Thank you all. Yep. Well, they Thank you. They, okay. they restore it, but there's still the outstanding large... But your peer review is over because Steve or we look at the work done? That's right, unless the yeah. commission chooses to have it. Yeah. And they're paying for that, right? That's your peer review? Um, I'm not sure what the arrangements are. Um, there's a consultant. Um, yeah, I think the commission paying for the okay. peer review. Okay. And yeah. they were probably paying for the end of that yeah. review. Because yeah. there are the fees out of the end. Well, since it's my first day, I'm going to let that one go. Because <laughs> okay. I don't know why this guy didn't pay for peer review, but I'm done. Thanks. Okay. We'll, we'll work on the policies. <laughs> Thank you, Art. Thank you. Okay. We you have all. a notice of intent hearing, 7.15 p.m., lot number two, Webster Street, Haywood Homes, LLC. Please make sure everybody signs in on the clipboard. Come on, yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Town of Douglas Conservation Commission. We'll hold a public hearing for Haywood Homes LLC on July 16th, 2018 at 7.15 p.m. in the Municipal Center at 29 Depot Street for work to be done pursuant to the Town of Douglas Wetland Bylaw in the Wetland Protection Act, Mass General Law 131, Section 40. The proposed work is to be done at lot number two, Webster Street, and involves the construction of a single-family home and associated earthwork, utility, and landscaping within the 100-foot buffer zone. Good evening, Travis Brown with Andrews Survey and Engineering here on behalf of Hayward Homes. Uh, this is Lot 2 Webster Street. Um, it's a filing for a single family home with a private septic system and private well. Uh, on the plan, Webster Street is at the bottom of the page. Um, we're accessing between a couple of EVWs. Um, there's currently a head wall on either side. Um, there's been a curb cut that's been put in uh, many years ago for a potential driveway, so we're utilizing that area, um, minimizing any work to the wetlands there. This 25-foot buffer zone is depicted in blue. 50-foot uh, is here and the 100 is in this location. So we're coming in, proposing to come in with a driveway here, up to a house that will sit just inside of that 100-foot buffer zone in the back. Um, all this work is outside of the 50. As you can see here, this is the tree line erosion control barrier. Uh, the only work that would be within the 25 and the 50 
would be for this driveway here. It should be a small amount of clearing for a 12 foot driveway. Uh, the septic system that we're proposing is in this location, just inside the 100 foot buffer. Try to push everything to the rear of this lot as much as we can uh, to minimize that buffer zone work. Uh, we're up against some setback issues in the back, um, which is why we didn't get that out of the 100. We proposed a well in this location uh, outside of the 100 foot buffer. Provided a stockpile area that's also outside of the 100 foot buffer. Erosion control, we yes. propose a filter sock, um, eight inch straw waddle. Your folks uh, can't see that well <laughs> from this far away. Is that um, a, a red line at the top one? This here? The 100 foot buffer. That's the 100 foot. And is the slimy green stuff at the bottom that's of the page the actual? That's the actual wetland. Wet so okay. there's a BBW here, there's a BBW here. So we're going to cross uh, where there's a head wall, there's an existing kind of driveway opening. How close area. to the um, erosion controls is your grading going to be? Uh, the erosion? Feet? No, not there in the back. The grading to the erosion control? Mm -hmm. um, pretty close, right up to the erosion control. Well, okay, so it's going to touch so it? Yeah, I mean, it'll be graded short of that erosion control barrier. And how high are the grades immediately after that? In other words, if you've got eight inches of uh, erosion, you've got 16 inches of dirt beyond it or not? So then that slope goes up at a three to one slope off of that. And it'll tail right to the, the toe of the erosion control? That's what we're proposing, yeah. Thank you. What's the uh, square footage of the disturbance at the road entrance? In the buffer zone. So you're not perfect. Um, in the. There's no wetland disturbance. Okay, so this is existing. That's existing. Do you, yeah, there's an existing. So the culvert was. There's okay. head walls on either side that are right at the wetland edge, and there's a 12 inch culvert under that. And existing. you're not widening anything existing. We're not. Okay, Steve, Maybe do you have any comments before we get into yeah, this? Did, did Steve get something like about the well, the well line? Yeah, I, I know it's outside, but the, the most of the house is anyway. One of the comments if you could push the house outside the, outside the juris jurisdiction. Of the he said he had a, uh, a zoning setback. Yeah, so we've pushed the house kind of to the limits where we can to make a driveway work. So we can't, based on lot configuration, push it back because of, because of the setback. The driveway would be paved. The driveway would be paved, yeah. And, uh, I, I, took, I did take a video of the both lots. Yeah, sure. And there, and there's no replication and there's no wetlands crossing? There's no wetland fill, no re wetland replication. National and Heritage and Dane Species comment on it? No. Yes, no adverse impacts. Yeah. I have a letter with me okay, that I can Yeah, I have a letter in the file. So your driveway is right on the edge of the 100, it looks like, from I don't know if this thing taped together or something. It doesn't want to come apart, but no. it's not meant to. I think this is what yeah, we're supposed to be looking at. Right. Excuse me, can I talk? Um, not quite yet. Once after we watch the video. So I'll be walking in. So I, I don't know, real quick. If you want to show both lots, so there's actually two. Uh, there's going to be a meeting right after this. So I'm going to come in <coughs> this lot, wrap around, so you can see all the back the upland, the stone walls, and then come down the driveway of the next of mile the th Lot three, okay. So this is where the driveway is coming in. Um, Can you show me the guardrail on there or not? Oops. The guardrail, I think, is just past our property. Is it denoted it's off, the, off the page? It's not on the line. So the wetland's to the left, and I'm kind of probably going up the driveway now. It's being proposed. Kind of just get an idea what the upland looks like. Are these the two lots that are just past Cedar and mm -hmm. back up to the state forest? Okay. 
what's nice about the lot is that there is some beautiful high stone walls. Uh, you'll see me cross a couple of them that act as natural barriers so when the project's done. Mm -hmm. Do you locate the walls on the plan? They are. Yeah. Uh, speed it up a little bit. Tracy, you have a question? Sure. When anybody comes forward with a, with a proposal, how many plans are they supposed to put with uh, an application? I mean, they have two, typically two, big copies. Right, Steve? They give you two copies, two and then yeah. you can make their Two copies, and then whatever they're presenting with? Yeah. Okay, can I see that then, please? Yeah. Thanks. What's the length of the culvert? I don't know if you want to show the stone wall and what kind of plan. Yeah, yep. he said he showed them. There's a lot more. to 30 feet long. Okay. So that's it for the, this lot here, pretty much. I'm going into the other lot now. Okay, do we want to pause here or do you want to keep? Yeah, probably pause here. Okay, that's fine. Um, so talk to us again why the house can't be out of the 100. Let's, let's talk about that. You're saying side setback, so you're at the... 25 on that side. Yeah, we're at both. So this 25 is here, this 25 is here. Putting that house here is a oh, greater distance. Oh, the shape that the lot is. Right. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, we certainly meet the 50-foot requirement. And then you have proposed a what width <coughs> uh, paved driveway? Yes. What What is the width? 12 feet. How come you don't have that on the plan? The width? Mm-hmm. So I'd ask you to do that next time. Thanks. Um, your stockpile is shown there? Yep, back here, outside of the 100 foot. So with that driveway, as you can see with the gentle slopes, there's no real grading. It's going to be following pretty much existing grade until we get it into the site. Yeah, you have erosion control anyway on either side? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Did you have any other comments? Board? No. Okay. I, I know it's, uh, I'm going to talk to one of my neighbors. Okay. Sure. All right. We'll get there in a second. Board, do you have any other questions or comments right now? Okay. Anybody from the audience? Yes. Please state your name and address. My name is Sarah Trudell. I live at 173 Webster Street. I'm sorry about my voice. I'm pretty sick, but I wanted to drag myself out here tonight to, um, I'll tell you, I don't like this plan. I am opposed to driving through the wetlands. I'm opposed to the fact that the house is within the buffer zone. I don't know how town meetings work, and I don't know how variances work. I just feel like if we have buffer zones around our wetlands, we should respect those and that they're there for a reason. I would urge you to say no to this. I don't know. Okay. You're not asking for a variance in any way, though, right? So no. Are just allowed to build within the buffer zone? Well, we have jurisdiction within 100 feet. That's the Wetlands Protection Act of Massachusetts. Then we have our local bylaw. And we typically go with no, um, no construction within the 50 okay. to the wetland. Um, so the configuration of this lot is squeezing the backside there. Now, I don't know what size house you have. Um, is that the actual house that's going to go there? It's a 40 by 70 box, so whatever is proposed would fit inside that box. It may have bump outs. What about the back deck? Correct. Deck? Mm -hmm. um, I've been told there will not be any decks. And this front stair set of stairs. Deck, so it should be outside the buffer if it's in the... It would oh. have to be on yeah. this side because this is where the, yes. the driveway comes or in. Or the back. No, I don't have a problem with him putting that out there, but if, if he's saying it's not a deck, that's that's very unusual. Yeah. So, so I'm just saying, why not just give him a little extra area for a deck? If there were, like I think has been mentioned, it would be outside of that 100-foot buffer zone. And could I ask um, the this Hayward? Are they the owners of the land now? I believe. I believe the they're the owners now. Yes. So this place has been on the tax rolls for years and years and years people paying all kinds of thousands of dollars for taxes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to make the um, motion to accept 
the plan as um, I'm well, some, hold am I ahead of myself? Uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, so I just want to see if anybody else has any other questions. But right now, you don't have any front stairs. Your house is really quite oversized for the footprint. And what are you as far as feet into the 100 for that house? It's probably about 15 feet. Let's say it's a third of 40. Area. Yeah, I mean, uh, and then what's your side setback over on the top right corner? Top right, right yeah. So it's a little under 35 feet. Okay, so you can move that 10. Well, the problem the is line. if you move that, you mm -hmm. move the driveway with mm -hmm. it, you move this driveway with it, you can't mm -hmm. grade it. Well, but you can put the turnaround into the setback, right? Yeah, it's into the setback now. Yeah. But if you put it into the setback, see this grading associated with that? Yeah. Now you move that, now you move that off the lot. Which Are you required to have turnarounds? Uh, most people put them. I don't right. think it's a requirement, no. Right. People just like them. Well, I think they like to be able to back out and pull out their driveway yeah. as opposed to back down. Yeah. Do we want to take a site walk to view the location at all? Or could you get a flavor of it? I mean, that house seems very large, the footprint. And I think 15 feet, and you're pulling it 10, you'd only be 5 feet in. And I don't I don't love that you're cutting into the driveway too over here. The thing is, though, Tracy, he's got it 40 by 70. That's 2,800 square feet. He's saying he wants some leeway to go on the site and construct mm -hmm. it inside mm -hmm. that footprint. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that the 40 by 70 foot house is going to go there. If you feel like, no. you know, 10 feet doesn't make a difference one way or another, that's one thing, but I, I don't think... Well, you'd move outside the buffer with the house. I mean, we meet the 50-foot offset that you require for yes. structures that's by a lot. Yeah, that's suggested, but if there were wetlands I mean this there. is a critical wetland I mean I, I don't I know you don't have anybody with the habitable species and you've done those reviews and I'm sure you've done mm -hmm. all your homework but this swamp <laughs> is part of this rare cedar swamp that we have in our town that's a, a rare natural asset to the town and, and I think in light of that we should be preserving as much buffer as possible how is I it think rare? we've done that with the design I mean we've the pushed everything outside of, of the buffer swamps throughout New England is that tree or it's, it's the tree and the swamp and the kind of sub-ecosystem that that creates. Like in the state forest, there's the boardwalk. If you go from Walm Lake, hmm. that is the Atlantic cedar swamp, and that's... But he's not asking for any flow of here. ...species as well. He's not asking for any, hyd any hydrology to go into the wetlands. Nope, he's not. not our and guy. Fisheries and Wildlife, we have that report. Yes, I can give it to you. Report. Right. So you would like to... Yeah, they weigh in on it, right? Yeah, and yeah, DEP no, has issued a, um, what do you call that thing? But they've <laughs> issued file numbers with no They're comments. file number yeah. with no comments. Mm -hmm. I think you still have some setback area to work with. Um, and then also the driveway, that's that second one. The driveway is just the driveway. How long has uh, Hayward Homes been in business, do you know? A uh, long time, building homes. Well, you're an engineer. Can you define that a little better? Uh, probably 20 years. Okay. And what, what town do they operate out of? Or? Douglas, built many houses in Douglas. And who's uh, the Oxford. owner? What's the name? The actual man's name? Uh, Mr. Bangma. At Dale Oxford. Bangma? Yep. Okay. Let me know when I can fire off a motion. Board, do you have any more? Comments? Do you think we're ready to act on this tonight, or did you want to see some alternatives, yes. changes, proposed driveway with um, moving out of the buffer? I'd like to see moving more? out of the buffer, and I don't think I need a sidewalk. I just I'd like to see moving out of the buffer for this. Okay. Whether that means relocating the spot or resizing the house. Maybe you could add length versus the width and get the same square footage, right? Yeah, ultimately we don't know the footprint of the house. The footprint right. of the house could be out of the buffer, but right. we're meeting the 50 foot. You but know. then they so could move it forward Travis, as Travis, well. The thing is though, you could admit 40 feet 
is really big for a footprint. So can it you is, with 30 or not? But it gives you the leeway to be able to do different things, different style houses within that So box. do you feel like you could get a 30-foot house and a 10-foot deck off the back in that footprint? Or do you feel like you need to attach a deck in the back? Because, look, at, let's be honest, that house isn't getting built without a back deck. So <laughs> I'm just wondering if the he's... The deck is not in our jurisdiction. So if they... Oh, because it's outside the 100? Yeah. Okay. So if they pulled the permit, Steve would be okay with the addition of a deck the whole entire length. Is that... Uh, the Travis, front that stairs are one. pink line, is that the 100 foot? This is the 100 foot, yes. Right. So we only have jurisdiction the first 20 feet. What do we care what goes right. on behind it? We don't. We don't. You keep asking, Let's though. fire off a motion, <laughs> man. <laughs> with you. Um, so no front stairs, then. You're not going to have sure a front porch. I'm sure there will be front stairs to the level of detail that I don't know this house is being built. I can't <laughs> tell you where those stairs would okay. be or how so big they would be. Okay. So, what's your pleasure, yeah. board? I'd like to make I'd a motion. Can I defer to Mike something? if he wants to make one first? No. Nope. He has ahead. a question, I think. Do you have a question? No, I, he just answered it, but I was a little confused of where the 100-foot line was, but you're... 90% of that home is outside the 100. And not to mention the rest of this 50 foot and beyond that is all going to remain wooded. So we've is pushed this thing plan? Is back. Is that a note on the plan? That's the tree As line. it will remain wooded. Okay. <coughs> that's going to be cleared lawn uh, all the way up to that tree line. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Okay. You want I make a motion to accept the plan as presented with uh, no sidewalk. So let me just ask for anybody else in the audience have any comments? Anybody else or still me? You can have one more comment. So you want to build the driveway and it's going to be a paved 12 foot driveway through the swamp, through the buffer area, but it doesn't count because it's not a, it's not a structure. It's just a driveway, is that correct? Well, it counts, but he's not crossing, he's not disturbing a wetland. Is he's he going through a, a sort of a bridge of uh, upland, so he's not disturbing any wetlands anywhere. That was not my my understanding of that when I was looking at the property. Well, Travis should explain yeah, that better. There, so there's no wetland fill. There's an existing head wall on this side of the wetland and one on this side. There's a culvert that goes under it. That area has been built up to accommodate a driveway already, so that's where we intend to cross. So you're not touching the culvert? I'm not touching the culvert. You're saying the driveway is going to be within the 50 foot mm -hmm. of the wetland. And it can be and based I on your bylaws. Yes. The bylaw is 10 feet, right? Do you feel the reason? Unless you can overcome <coughs> our, the negative impact. Do you, do you feel the need to explain why he has the right to do that or not? No. Okay. I mean, if that was a wetland continuous, we would still be able to cross that wetland right, as long as our we... Our local bylaw also mandates driveway locations to 10 feet within to the BBW, the resource area. Yes. Hey, how far are you to the closest flag? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're right around right around that 10 feet to the erosion control. Right around. Can't you, why don't you put on a plan that it's five feet or something like that? Because these people are going to ask me questions. To see if it actually is within those 100, that 100 feet buffer. I don't think that's too much to ask for. Okay. Anything like that delays the process. It's not fair. These guys have rights. They've been paying the taxes on this property forever. And Actually, there's nothing unusual about this. Recently. Yeah. There's nothing unusual about this. So We're not sure when it was purchased. My motions, the people before okay. that somebody paid taxes on it for all these years. So I'll entertain a motion. First, we need to, if we want to have a motion to close the public hearing, no other additional information would be able to be submitted. I make a motion to close the public hearing. Okay. Motion, do I hear a second? Yeah, I'll second. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. And opposed? Opposed. Okay. All right. Now you could make your motion to issue the order of conditions. Did that one just pass? or? Yes. You don't have to say yes? or It's just assumed that you're saying yes? No, I'm new, so... I'm not voting unless there's a tie. So is... Oh, so is 2-1. to one. Correct. Gotcha. What's the next thing I have to do? <laughs> Sorry. 
we right. closed the, closed we the, closed the public hearing. Yes. That's all you did. The hearing was closed. Done. Let's close it. I no, make a did. motion. I make a motion to accept. Need to issue the order of conditions. And issue the order of conditions. As presented. As presented. Okay. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. Okay. Motions remain in second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. And Steve? The order of conditions, are you approving it? Yes. Or I would say that. Okay. Well, he's issued it. Yeah, well, you know. You oh, that is approved? You yeah. want me to say it? I mean, the okay. order of conditions, I can approve it or deny it. Yeah, it's approved. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good. Uh, I, I just want to make a second. public um, note that, Travis, when you come in here, I'd like to see the measurements of how far you are to any driveway to a wetland because the people have a right to know that. Yep. And I believe that is in our local bylaw, too. Yeah. <laughs> right? There's a chart with the yeah. local bylaw setbacks. Yeah. Yes. Unless you can overcome. The presumption. presumption. Yeah, I'm just saying he's an engineer and he didn't put it on the plan. I'm not trying to, you know, call him out on it, but for the future plans, if someone wants well to know. Well, if it ends up being 16 feet versus the 12 feet, then. No, no, just yeah. define it. Yep. Town of Douglas Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing for Hayward Homes, LLC, on July 16th at 7.20 p.m. in the Municipal Center at 29th Depot Street for work to be done pursuant to the Town of Douglas Wetland Bylaw and the Wetland Protection Act. Mass General Law 131, Section 40, the proposed work is to be done at Lot 3, Webster Street, and involves the construction of a single-family home, associated earthwork, utility, and landscaping within the 100-foot buffer zone. For the record, okay. Travis Brown, Andrew Survey and Engineering, here on Please behalf of Hayward Homes. Uh, this is for Lot 3, so if you're in Webster Street looking at the lot we just discussed, it would be the lot to the left of that. So this area here would be part of that same BBW that was on the left side of that driveway that we just looked at. Excuse right. me, we're, so just by the way the flow cry, uh, flow cries, where is the last house you just presented? Right here. Okay, thanks. So Webster Street's here at the bottom of the page. Uh, again, that's the same BBW. This blue would be the 25-foot buffer. We have the 50-foot buffer. The outermost pink would be the 100-foot buffer. So we have proposed a driveway as far to the left of this property as we can outside of the buffer zone. Um, you can see it's just inside the 100-foot here. Come up into the house, which is, again, outside of the 100-foot buffer zone. Our private septic system outside of the 100-foot buffer zone. Our well would be, our proposed stockpile would be as well. Um, there are some interior walls that are depicted on the plan here that will run here. Those will remain. Um, so that's a good natural buffer from that driveway to that wetland area. There's also a stone wall that runs here across the property and towards the other lot that we looked at. Um, there's some also some interior walls here. Um, we'll have to remove portions of those uh, for construction, but we maintain the ones that provide a good natural buffer, hard buffer zone to the wetland and the buffer zone areas. Um, we Again, we propose erosion control barrier that runs here, which is also depicts the uh, limit of clearing that we propose. So this area here will remain wooded, um, a good portion of that buffer zone. So really, the, our buffer zone work would be this into the 100 and a small portion of this would be within the 100 the remaining area would be outside of the 100 foot buffer this is it's on that one yeah, yeah this is the other plan one. yeah but it's on this one too oh. <laughs> so it's it's this one right So we've got the, the, the measure 99.9 .9 to the septic for the, mm -hmm. you know, basically it puts everything outside the 100. You got the septic approved? I believe both of these are approved, yes. So everything, how about the driveway down here, is that 
even that's outside the hundred. It looks like um, there's a small portion of it, this part here, that would be within the hundred foot. Yeah. But we can't push that driveway anymore <coughs> to the left outside yeah, of that one hundred yeah. foot. Okay. Similar to the other lot, the grades um, we're going to follow those with the driveway, so there's no major grading as part of that driveway construction. Where does the I don't. The line to the street exists in real life. So the pavement line? Yeah. Yeah, it would be actually down it's here. It's out there. The okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you see where it? Because oh, I'm looking the at the stone. I see it. I see it <laughs> now that you've pointed it out. It, it faded out before yeah. the end of the. Yeah. And I was looking at the stone wall and I'm like, that is not a street there. <laughs> <laughs> Travis said that. Okay. But it, uh, so this again. Crosses the, the, the proposed uh, driveway, looks like, right? Right, so then I would come back to, the, in the other driveway opening, you were saying you were coming over an existing culvert. What are you coming over for this one? So there's there's no wetland there, so there's no culvert pipe or head wall or anything it that just conveys drainage grade. right. Okay. It just comes off at grade. But there is a stone wall there, right? There is a stone wall that runs here. So there would be a portion of that so you'll cut in a hole front in that would have yeah, to be taken. Cut it on the corner, it seems like a natural yes. place to put it. Question, guys. Can can you ask somebody like this, uh, say you have to leave the stone wall? Can you ask put that in its condition, or because it has nothing to do with wetlands, we don't Historical have any? Historical significance. Well, in this case, it saying? does have something to do with. Yeah, wetlands. yeah. I'm just it wondering if we have the, the power to do that. It's within the hundred, yes. It's jurisdictional. Any activity within the hundred. And how would that be? Uh, um, um, what the word enforced? We, we typically would say rebuild the portion that you need to move or keep it on the site. Well, let's say he's got a hundred feet of wall going up the right side of that driveway. Could we put it in a condition that the wall stays in perpetuity? Um, or do not, we not in perpetuity. But the wetland um, changes it a little longer. Is there a jurisdiction? Say that again? There if the wetland moves, it's no longer in our jurisdiction. No, no, I know. I'm just okay. saying the dry part. I mean, it's a great feature. Could we say, hey, we want... Um, if it's outside the 100, no. We okay. can't say it. Good, thanks. Uh, the audience have any questions about this hearing? How much is going to be clear? Could you just um, repeat oh. your name and address, please? Sierra Trudell, 173 Webster Street, Douglas, Mass. And what was your question? How much is going to be cleared for lawn? For lawn? So there's an area that will be cleared right off Webster Street that will be associated with a driveway. So we're proposing to clear this area around the house. So this would be lawn around the house. Do you see the tree line? The dark, probably, yeah, swiggly right. tree line? I do. Travis, so that area. Travis, do you know where this lady's house is in relation to this? I believe it's the one just next door. Yeah, I'm next yeah. door. And I'm show me well. where, you know, roughly her house would be compared. No, no, just on the... Yeah, I don't have her house located on this. So I'm do you know, ma'am, is it higher or lower? Roughly in line. Okay. Thanks. <coughs> My concern is. Can she upgrade is to you or not? This actually, it's really. I think they're about the same elevation. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> I can see everyone recoiling. So I'm get my chair. I'm sorry. It's very dry in here too. My concern is again. This is a very large house. We're we having two very large houses on two workably small plots. I don't want to change the dynamic of the area. I don't want to change the beauty of the area. Okay. Travis, do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, I mean, th the only thing I can really say is the majority of our work is outside of the commission's jurisdiction, even on this. I mean, we have two small areas that were within inside of it, but based on the bylaw regulations, um, we meet those. So the only thing that we can talk to as a committee is is the bit of lawn that's in here. Yeah, for associated with the septic grading, right? And would you say the reason that you use a footprint is so that when you have a buyer coming up that they can choose from a variety and that Dale would take the, his house and move it in and out and around that and generally the plan <coughs> that you put forward is not going to be the width and length? Right, exactly. So this box would accommodate multiple styles, multiple... Um, is this house pre... is this lot pre-sold? It is not. Okay. Um, board, do you have any other questions? 
Okay. I'll entertain a motion on this. I move we we'll issue an order conditions close for the public hearing first. Oh, excuse me. I move we close the public hearing for second lot number three. Okay, motions remain in second. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And all those opposed? Aye. Do you have any other questions? I was just wondering if we can move the lawn back if this is really necessary for the septic. That's yeah, it is because we have good soil testing that we use there. I mean, the ha the septic <coughs> itself is out, you know, 100 feet away. But I mean, barely, but yeah. Yeah, so we have to meet breakout requirements um, for that septic, so our grading needs you to You have to regrade that whole area so it ends up being lawn. Do you want to explain yes. breakout so that people can yeah. understand that? Yeah, so when we design a septic system, Title V under Massachusetts law um, requires breakout, so 15 feet out from that system, you need to be at the same elevation as the top of the system in case that system leaked out. That's what the breakout is. So from there, you can start grading. But you need to carry that grade to that 15 foot before you start sloping down. So actually, in reality, you could have gone much further and come closer to the 50 foot, but you didn't to, to protect and to create exactly what people would like, which is less um, activity in that 50 to 100 foot buffer. Right. Okay. Um, the motion passes with the uh, closing of the public hearing. That means that um, there's no further information to be submitted. Um, do you want to make another motion, Mike? Uh, we'll be issue an order of conditions for lot number three. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Do you want to abstain? Abstain. Okay. Okay. Question, question passes. Um, yes. Because I've had this question before. Why would I abstain instead of saying yes or no? And if you are still up in the air, what's just don't want to weigh in on it. You, yeah. Right. I mean, you, you want to have enough forward, information. You already have the two votes. No, because I've I've wanted myself to abstain from something, or if the situation comes up. So I just want to know what we should do. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Okay, next uh, public hearing, 7.30. We're running a little behind. Sorry, mm. everyone. Um, public hearing, Manchuk Pond, Tata Sutton, Board of Selectmen. Who is here to present? Come on over. You can have a seat at the table. Did you bring a plan or anything? No, or? no plans. Okay. And do you have the advertisement? And who are you, sir? Uh, I'm uh, Dominic Maringolo from Solar. Can I just um, open the, the hearing, uh, please? This is the mailing. Okay. Just get a mail. Thank you. And my colleague who was here last time said you folks had found them. Okay. Already just give me a one moment. of public hearing, Town of Douglas Conservation Commission, 29 Depot Street, Douglas Smith. The Town of Douglas will hold a public hearing for a notice of intent on June 18, 2018 at 7.15 p.m. in the Municipal, Municipal Center, 29 Depot Street for work to be done pursuant to the Town of Douglas Wetland Bylaw and the Wetland Protection Act, Mass General Law 131, Section 40, the proposed work location to be done on Manchuk Pond and involves an integrated aquatic management program to monitor, assess, and implement measures to for control of non-native nuisance aquatic ve vegetation. So Thanks. welcome and Thank you. for the record, your name? Uh, my name address. is Dominic Maringolo. Um, with, I'm an environmental engineer at Solitude Lake Management. We're at 590 Lake Street in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. Um, 
So yes, we're, we're proposing an aquatic management program on Manchog Pond basically to uh, manage non-native vegetation, which includes uh, fanwort, variable water milfoil, and phragmites. Uh, these are, um, again, non-native species, which means they, they're not native to the area. They're known to outcompete uh, and crowd up the beneficial native species. Uh, we do uh, prepare these management programs quite often. We're doing a number of other lakes in the region, but uh, we've been basically studying, our, us and our predecessor companies, Lycott Environmental, have been doing surveys of the vegetation on the, on the pond for many years. Uh, most recently, uh, back in July of, of last summer, 2017, uh, so we do we do know the, lo the locations of all the non-native species. Um, there's also a, a large number of native species, which is good. So we'd like to maintain <coughs> that ba balance of native species by managing the non-native species. And we're proposing to do that using uh, US EPA, uh, Massachusetts registered aquatic products herbicides um, to uh, spot treat areas of the pond to control these invasive species. We're also including, uh, as follow-up management, um, diver hand pulling, benthic barriers, um, suction harvesting to, to um, but basically to manage small occurrences that are either too scattered uh, to, to use with herbicides. But the, the specific herbicides we're planning to use are, are included in the notice of intent. Again, these are all uh, labeled for use in lakes and ponds. Um, we're at. We're requesting the use of fluoridone. Sonar is the brand name. It's basically a systemic herbicide for control of both uh, fanwort and uh, milfoil. Also, uh, diquat or the reward herbicide um, used to control uh, areas of milfoil. Uh, Flumioxazin or clipper is an aquatic herbicide used to control fanwort and uh, glyphosate, one of the brand names being Aquapro, would be used to control the Phragmites around the shoreline. Uh, and as this is an integrated program, we're asking for multiple year approval. We are also requesting um, contingent use of algicides, copper based algicides such as copper sulfate, Captain, uh, there's an, a couple other products here. Um, Peroxide, algicides, green, green, clean, pro. So can I stop you right there sure. and interrupt you for one second? Absolutely. So has um, Sutton Concom approved this? They have not. They, they held their first public hearing. Yeah. Uh, they, they basically, they didn't want to close the hearing until uh, your commission had a chance to have a full hearing. And, and have they suggested um, anything for revisions? No, plan? not revisions. No. no. Okay. I believe um, my colleague gave me an email that was sent, I, I thought, to a couple people here in town. Um, Steve, did you receive anything? Yeah, well, we received comments from um, Brendan. Yeah. Yep, that's what I was referring Brandon. to. Brandon. Uh, Brandon, do you have it mm -hmm. there? Yeah. Want me to copy me? Uh, it should have been in everyone's folder. No. Maybe it was in the last meeting. Yeah, no. Do I have that? Mm -hmm. Do I? No, we do not have a copy. Did you have any pictures of those species? Um, I'd like just a uh, brief <laughs> summary on. on yeah. Um, they're pretty common. You can find images all over. But the people here don't know that it's common. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I'm just, they're, I'm they're just saying. Uh, no idea what you're talking actually, about. Actually, believe it or not, no one's ever asked me. <laughs> we, That's we, why I'm here, my friend. <laughs> I have the flyer done, in my bathroom. We've done so a number of these. So what is it? Like the the grass? Or? The water will fill if you can go swimming in anywhere around here. If it wraps around your legs, it's probably water milk flow. Okay. It, it's incredibly common. I'm part of the BRWA, uh, Blackstone Valley Watershed Association, okay. and so I'm familiar with these processes. Um, I'm wondering if you ran it by the BRWA. Not that there's a legal need to. I just uh, think it'd be we have, and it was published in, in the environment, the notice of the hearing was okay. published in the environmental yeah. monitor. Why do we have jurisdiction? Mm -hmm. Because the pond is within our borders? Yeah. 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 And you're applying for our Ecological Restoration Limited Project, yes. right? So you also have some allowances. Um, we're just trying to get oriented with... Oh, pond. sure. No, I understand. Yeah, so one for, for the board and for the people, did you... Could you just give us an overview of the activities? Yeah. So, what the process is going to look like when you move me. it? Give us a layman's view. 
Okay. I mean, really, just break it down. No, that's fine. Uh, so, I mean, the basic annual program includes uh, we, we have to get a permit. In addition to the approval of both the towns, you have to get a permit from DEP, which is a license to apply chemicals. It's um, it's uh, run by the Office of Watershed Management. Um, it's basically a listing of the site, uh, which chemicals, which herbicides, which how many how many quantities. And those aren't necessarily used. organic, right? No. no. And so you're basically taking the bad weeds out, so and hope they don't grow back by using this. Is it a pesticide or herbicide? Herbicide. It's an herbicide. And what's the difference? Yeah. Herb well, pesticide is uh, an overarching term for anything that kills a pest, and in this case, the pest is and herbs a plant. because it's, it's herbal plant. life. Yeah. Like plant life. It's a plant life. And you mentioned something about divers. Somebody's diving down there to pull up weeds. No, th that's another tech. That's a um, different technique. <coughs> so we'll be using herbicides as well as, in some cases, we may use uh, divers to actually go down and physically pull the weeds. And if someone was living on that pond, what about this process might they not like, and what can you do to reassure them that everything's fine? Uh, well, I, I think a lot of times people do have concerns, obviously, with using an herbicide. I mean, these these products have all been reviewed uh, by the EPA, uh, Mass Massachusetts Department of Agriculture, and the Department <coughs> of Environmental Protection. There is uh, a short period of time in which the water is rendered yes. unswimmable, though. And I, I have to I'm glad that you brought that up, pond. because what's the shelf life of that stuff? So you apply it one day, is a kid that goes in there swimming going to have a problem? So actually there, uh, there's actually no swimming restrictions on any of the products we use. <coughs> there's no, re no recreational restrictions whatsoever. Typically uh, when we go out the day of the treatment, it's our policy, if it's agreed to with all the parties, would be to close the lake down for recreation just for that day, oh. just to keep us out, uh, keep so people out of the So what time of the year? Do you plan on? Depends on the herbicide. This, this, uh, typically anywhere from the end of April through to the end of June. Would when be do you want to do it? Particular and, uh, ones have to be applied at certain times. When do you want to do this? Yep. Yeah, so we'll, we'll ideally, we'd use a systemic herbicide, so sonar. Um, that would be applied. Uh, you know, it, the window would be from late April. Uh, and it's actually a slow-acting herbicide. requires multiple applications to maintain the You just said problem. that you really like it if people aren't in the water when this application is taking place. Yep. What time of year do you want to put this application? The don't, first don't application. Don't you dare give me a six-month window again. <laughs> I'm just saying, are you planning this next week or are you planning no, this no, in October? This is, is going to be for next year at this and point. Is, yeah. So why are we permitting <coughs> something now that's going to happen a year from now? Uh, just we want to get the, the permitting process completed and in place because this will be an early. Uh, oh. Are you, you guys going to do the work? How do you mean that? Or just a, you're just, just not just doing the study. You're, you're going to you're gonna do this work. Okay. As far as I know, yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's and some who's going to hire? Have a who's gonna hire you? Um, Town of Sutton. Town of Sutton, I think, uh, or and or the Manchog Pond Foundation. I'm not entirely sure. When you call a foundation, is it a watershed committee like White and Reservoir? I think it's sort of like a lake association. Is that so. representative here tonight? I believe there's so. some. Do you want to say something? Yes, my name is Dave Schmidt. I'm, I'm just asking him. I'm not asking to talk to him. I just want to know if he's <laughs> Okay. Here. We'll just hold the public comments for just a little we, bit. We would like to get out of here sometime so, tonight. Yeah. But. Well, first, uh, let's, let me answer your first question. Ideally, again, it's going to be dependent on um, which herbicide the folks decide to use. Ideally, we would use the systemic sonar. What's that mean? Systemic means it kills the root. And yeah, how I think of sonar something different. That's a brand, the brand name sonar. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's confusing. Uh, it, it's, it, it takes um, 45 to 60 days to for fluoridone or sonar to kill plants, so it actually requires us to do multiple applications to maintain the concentration in the water. Uh, so the first application, late April, early May, um, follow-up application, probably mid to late May, um, a third and final application probably sometime in June. What's the sometime. latest time in the season you can apply this? Uh, depending on when we start, but uh, there is no restriction. Can, we could, we could do can you do it in November? No. Um, I would say Freezing August. Freezing temperatures kill water. So there is a restriction? Well. Not a restriction on the label, just uh, you know, just the practicality. <laughs> why, why the practicality? That's and this is important, so. Dies in the ice. Plants uh, have to be actively growing to absorb the herbicide and die. So typically, um, 
after Jul after uh, when you get into September, October, the plants start to senescence or die off on there. The maybe that man can answer, or maybe this gentleman. That watershed. I'm sorry, I'm not using the right term, but whatever your committee is, has a mechanism in place, and I would assume it's email or some sort of notice where every person on the lake gets notified. Is that right? Okay. Um, through the chair. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Wait that's okay. That's all right. And let's just um, take the board's comments first, and then I'll yeah, ask yeah, okay. yeah, for the audience's I'm sorry. input. But that's a good question. He can be thinking about the answer. <laughs> um, so, as far as the negative impact that these invasive species have been having, mm -hmm. why you would like to do this. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. if you don't do it, what will continue to happen as far as the Thank negative you. Um, Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, uh, so, know. if you, you had a chance to look at the report, okay. uh, basically... One, one person at a time, please. Right now, we've only found fanwort and milfoil in probably half a dozen different small areas of the, of the pond. So uh, what would happen if it wasn't to be managed is the fan what the invasive species would basically spread. Um, and then they would spread <coughs> anywhere that plants could grow. And over a period of time, they would grow <coughs> more extensive, more dense. Uh, we would lose, potentially lose some of the native species because typically the non-native species outcompete basically mm -hmm. uh, the native species so mm -hmm. you, you get a spread of the bad plants you get a loss of the good plants uh, so ideally we would, we would start to manage those plants S right away so was did it was it brought to your attention because they've noticed the uh, the association noticed that there was an overgrowth of the invasive Essentially, and they said oh we better do something yeah and, uh, now periodically they've had uh, us and our predecessor companies do surveys um, so, um, and basically, they've, they've we've been ma monitoring the pond for a number for probably I don't know exactly how long. Um, okay. Probably 15 to 20 years or longer. Um, and it was um, the last several times, couple times that we've been out doing the surveys that they've, they've seen the plants and the the folks around the lake have noticed them getting worse. So. Okay. So, question? Yes. Your company has been associated with this process on that lake for 15 years. To some extent, yeah, it was a part of such a. Do you have so. what kind of uh, liability policy do you carry? Uh, we we cover full liability. We can, provide, we can, we can get that. Yeah, we can get that certificate. from the applicant. Okay, Steve, do you have any questions or comments? Well, it's outside my realm of expertise. So. Okay. All right. Um, and then we also have a DEP. Um, we have a DEP permit that's going right. to be issued once it gets yes. through mm -hmm. us and Sutton. My only comment was, you mean the DEIR at all? Yes. Yeah, we take that all into account. We've, you know, obviously we've gone over those documents very, very detailed, and uh, we make sure that everything's compliant. One of the, one of the things in that document is, is drawdown. I know the pond was completely drawdown down a few years ago. Did you guys do any uh, <laughs> caution? Uh, did you do any work while the lake was drawn down? No. Can I ask if anybody. One. Would it be? I mean, is that yes. appropriate? One. Well, the. the the deeper drawdown, and I don't know a lot about the uh, about the happenings there over the years, but um, you know, since since the things have been normalized, I believe that they're typically um, no, but the they had the, the, the dam repair drawdown, which completely drew through the the, whole, the entire lake down to nothing. Yep. If that happens, that like winter, winter drawdown and drawdown, is that appropriate time for doing summer thing? The there's no uh, the herbicides have to be used or have to be used when there's water in the pond and there's um, you know there's certainly unnatural conditions like the deeper drawdown but um, the plants um, can be controlled by a drawdown in the winter but yeah not not during not during the summer period. So. Okay, Katie Grace, do you have any? Yeah, I was just saying I've seen that done as well. I went through the report rather briefly. Everything looks like what I've seen done before. Uh, the processes in place, everything makes sense. Okay. Mike, do you have any comments? No. Okay. Anyone from the audience? Got a comment. Hold on. Anyone from the audience? My name is Dave Schmidt, 48 Bigelow Road, mm -hmm. uh, president of the Manchard Pond Foundation. We, we ask Solitude to come and evaluate our pond uh, and put together a, a plan to, uh, to take an approach on these. They've been evaluating our pond for about 28 years since 1990. Um, so, and, and yes, we do have a mechanism. We have a, approximately 125 butters. We have approximately 100 paid members to our foundation. 
Uh, we do have email and we do have postage that we do send out. Everybody has been notified the notice of intent. So. Any express concerns? Uh, no, this is somewhat of an outcry from the membership. We have an annual meeting every day to propose our budget and up and coming things. And over the past few years, there's been continual concerns about the growing number of weeds. Okay. All right. Anyone else from the audience? No. Okay. Gary. So the outcry is that you have weeds, not that this is going on? Pardon? Is it okay to address Yes. Yeah, that's fine. So the outcry, you said you use the word outcry. The outcry is that there's weeds there. Let's get them taken care of. It's not that the outcry is that this man is doing work, right? Everybody's okay with the work. We try to put a toolbox together. I mean, you heard him talk about diver assisted, and you also talked to about barrier, and talked about some chemicals. And we're trying to put a toolbox together to take an approach on this. I guess I'm wondering, out of the 120 odd members, are there anybody that lives in the lake who's not crazy about this, and are they here to speak on it? That's all. No, there's an outcry about the weeds. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Um, we all set with this anymore? Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing and issue the order. Seconded. You're going to do so moved. So and moved. I hear a second. second. Mike seconded it. All those in favor? Aye. Yeah, well, you voted yeah, so aye. Okay. All right. You're all set. Right, thank, thank you, you very well, much. Well, I'm sorry. Look at I'm new, so everybody give me a break. You just voted, I thought, to close the hearing. And she did a and dual vote. She'd combine two things. So we can't reverse that. It's done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Right. And of course, um, we'll go with whatever Sutton says. Okay. <laughs> I'll let them know. Then. Special conditions, um, Steve. Yeah. We gonna wait till they close their <laughs> order to maybe um, do the special conditions. Yeah, do we need to? Order? Yeah, I think that I think that hearing is and it's either next Monday. I think it's next Monday. Okay. So it's a week. Yeah. Do I need right? to amend the motion on that? Or you're gonna have to follow that anyway. No, you, you so haven't signed, you haven't signed it yet. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. I mean, you're gonna have to follow yep. what they say anyway. So exactly. you'll have lots of rules. Thank right, you. Thank you. Okay. Can you make up rules after that's done? No. Okay. But since it's it was a dual, <coughs> it's like a sort um, of a template of typical order conditions. Yeah, we have our special orders too. Um, Seven forty public hearing for ninety Peters Cove Road. <coughs> if you would like to use that, or if you have a small one, you can sit at the table. I don't know yeah. if anybody's going to be able to see that. Twenty scale. Is that your pretty? Okay. Well, not. All right. And I'd like to see a copy if you get one, please. Green cards. Thank you. And do you have a copy of the ad? And you owe one hundred dollars. Do you have that in check? The other yes, Okay. All right. I, I may be mistaken. I have a little. Steve, do you know what this little note is? Do you have a receipt? Thank you. Yeah, they have paid it already. Okay, good. Thank you. Oh, wow. A long time ago. Just a couple of things. Okay. This is the actual sentence. Oh, pocket. my. We had to blow it up because it was about that big. Okay. Can I see the other plan, please? One second. Let me just open the hearing. Uh, the Town of Douglas, as Conservation Commission, will hold a public hearing for Steve Bagnus on July 16th, 2018 at 740 p.m. in the Municipal Center, 29 Depot C, for work to be done pursuant to the Town of Douglas Wetland Bylaw and Wetland Protection Act, Mass General Law 131, Section 40. The proposed work location will be done at 90 Peters Cove and involves obtaining a wetland permit for an existing dock located at White and Reds. Okay. Good evening, my name is Bob Murphy with Murphy Associates. I'm here tonight with Steve Bagdus at the end of the table, representing him. A notice of intent that was filed for a dock that, this is an after the fact filing. Uh, the client has received a, a fine 
So we did fine Bas him for the violation. Mm -hmm. Violation. We, um, installed a dock. We show right here the, the, the uh, cross hash lines uh, within this property without a permit. Mm -hmm. So we're essentially here tonight to explain if we're the commission is aware we, we did have a meeting prior to this to explain um, why he he was not aware that he needed a permit but he found out that he did and that's why we're here tonight okay there's also an existing dock there's an existing dock here yes okay right here. what's the age approximately of that Central. do you know the that age dock, has it been uh, there forever 11 years okay did okay. you receive a permit for that one no okay um, and what is we did we did have we filed a notice of intent for yeah. the house mm -hmm. and the dock. Oh, when, okay. yeah. Okay, so you and did. It was built clearly all right. the work that okay. was done that you see here, other than this dock, mm -hmm. was covered <coughs> under a okay a, a, another order, and there was a, a certificate of compliance which was recorded. Okay. For this, and the dock that is there now is is located on the frontage of his property what I included is the legal waterfront line which is called a littoral line and essentially <coughs> one of the oldest laws in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts when they started developing waterfront property in the city of Boston they ran into trouble where they were developing docks and wharfs in front of other people's property. So they came up with this law which basically says you stand at the edge of the water and you go perpendicular to the edge and you go out and you control that water for what they call a reasonable distance from that line. So this, where you see the, <coughs> the property line comes down at an angle relative to the edge of the water, where it meets the water, the littoral line is perpendicular to the edge. So mm -hmm. the entire dock has been located within the frontage and the littoral zone of uh, 90 Okay, Peace let's Cobra. speak to, because you're talking about um, properties and all that, let's just speak to the dock, the materials, the construction. Do you have any pictures? Steve, you've got a picture, no, so right is it permanent? Yeah, it's, a, it's an aluminum dock. Yep. That's aluminum? No, it's a wooden dock. Oh, well, the edge? Oh, the other yeah. one. Okay. Well, you can explain more. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's oh, ASIC. Okay. It's, I guess it's plastic. It's what? Yeah. Oh. So, and it sits on two it wooden legs like okay. on top of the lake bottom on a cement pad. The cement pad is not in the ground. Mm -hmm. It sits on top. Two legs and then to the wooden frame dock with ASIC on the edges mm -hmm. and the top. Mm -hmm. There's a profile of that on the plan. Yeah. And when Which was it helpful. constructed? Approximately when was it constructed? Uh, February. Okay. And was it poured in place or were no, the footings? Pre it was brought in place. Okay. I poured the footings at home. I don't live there. Okay. I live in Sutton. Okay. How big are they? Uh, 18 inches, maybe. And does the wood sit inside it? No, or on top it sits of it? right on top of it. <coughs> the concrete pads are shown on the detail. I think it's and they, they were oh, poured, thanks. And, and they were just basically this flat sand here. Concrete pads sit on Thank the flat you. sand. Hey, is it okay to write on this plan and keep it? Or no? Go ahead. No. That's, our, that's our folder Don't touch copy. it. Right. Okay. But done. That's okay. And do you plan to keep it in the water through the year? Is it permanent? No, it's a removable dock. It can be removed. Okay. Did you plan on removing it when it freezes in? Uh, not really. Uh -huh. I could, but it's, it's it just sits on a shelf on the wall and two legs. I could slide it, slide it right out. Okay. You say it just sits on a shelf, but it's not affixed to the wall? It's bolt, it's, it has bolted stainless steel bolts. So you've got like a header or some kind of a flat piece and that's stuck to the concrete wall and it's bolted into that wall? Yes, that's what I think. Thank you. They're eye bolts. With gotcha. 
the broad goes across. One thing well, to that's note. Di that's different than what? Not that it doesn't matter. It's just it's not bolted to the wall. Thanks. It is affixed to the wall with a temporary flexible gotcha. joint. Thank you. Uh, the area we're, we're showing right now, you know, where the dock is with water, but the commission should be aware that during the drawdown in the winter, the dock is entirely out of the water. Mm -hmm. The water is yeah, probably far, 10 far feet yeah. or more away. Yeah. And Steve installed the dock when there was no water mm -hmm. in the area. Yeah, February, that's right. right. That's Just so that when we think in terms of a temporary dock, uh, usually <coughs> we would take it out if, if there were an ice condition, mm -hmm. where there's no water there at all. Mm -hmm. It's never going to see ice because there's mm -hmm. never going to be water up there. Yeah, there's no water there, so there's no ice, and that's why mm -hmm. you, you would... Um, but it is defined as a temporary dock because it is not permanently attached. In it's removed yeah. 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 Um, Steve, any comments on this? Not on this. About um, two docks on one property. What is the dock permitting requirements? There's, is there <coughs> state dock permitting on this one? Well, it's, well, it's, a, it's not a great pond, but okay. it's a, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a manual for filing s small docks. Yeah. And it suggests that if you have an existing dock, you can file it on DA, but if you have a, a new dock, you should file a notice of intent. A um, uh, permanent dock? Or well, any type? Well, for small dock. Well, for a dock. I, I, it doesn't get into permanent. I don't think most people take the docks in, in and out with them. Right, yeah, those may be different conditions where the water levels are. Right. Um, I know there's some neighbors here that have some issues also. Okay. And, and it doesn't really, typically, I don't think it gets too much into property land. I might be mistaken, but it, it, it's more about the jurisdiction of the commission and yes. how this impacts it has yes. on the resources. Right. Okay. And that's why they file with and the commission on with the type of dock that they're putting in, mm -hmm. the type of material, how they install mm -hmm. it. You know. Going. Okay. Board members, do we have any other questions? Yeah, what happens to the existing, this other dock? Anything? To the existing, pardon what? This other dock. The, the, the no, that's where existing my two boats dock. are. That's you not it's entirely separate. Dock, right? Yeah, they're both separated by approximately 30 feet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Separate and you show length on your um, diagram, the length of the. Dock. 20 feet. 20 feet. Okay. 4 feet by 20 feet. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. Anyone from the audience have any questions about this application? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to know what the purpose Name of Name and address, uh, please. Tom Kalinowski, 86 Peters Cove Road. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know what the purpose of the dock is, since he already has a dock, two boats on it. What is the purpose of this dock? Do you want to answer that? Yes, when uh, I have my friends on the lake, if they'd like to come over in their boat and I'm home in my boat, they can't park on my dock. They could pull in on one side of that dock, my side, mm -hmm. and visit Tom Evis, Paul Pudiat. I know people on the lake. Okay. And right. my grandkids love to jump off it. Okay. <laughs> All right, does that answer your question? Yeah, so what side of the dock would the additional boat be planted on? Just <coughs> my side of the dock, yeah, not side. on their property side. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that noted on it, or is that the property line is shown on the plan, and the, the two bolts, the eye bolts that are in the wall, are on the in the wall in the frontage of this property. I mean, you can make a suggestion to add that. Um, we're not going to add that because that's kind of between your neighbors, but I think that's what they're kind of asking to have yeah, no, I everyone. Won't, nothing will go on the other side. Okay. Yeah, that, Tom? Yep. Okay. Yeah. It, I guess it, it would be ideal if the dock could be angled a little bit more to fall parallel to the property line because it, obs it obstructs our access to the lake. Um, we're only concerned with the dock, but no, I, I think that, that if... Um, the applicant wanted to angle it. I think we, you know, at a little angle. I'd like to talk about that a little bit. What? Okay. 
what do you, what's your comment? Well, <coughs> uh, I just want to know the, the littor, do you call it littoral line? Or right. Okay. The littoral line, are you <coughs> saying then that if you have a straight line and your property is straight, because the bank is turned, the line follows the bank? It's perpendicular to the bank at the point where the property line meets. And because a lot of property lines come in at funny angles. Okay, I, I'm just doing a little research on this and I can't find exactly. Is it related to the Wetlands Protection Act or our bylaw? Well, let me, let me just say why I think it, it's related to the application, if I could. Okay. Quickly. Okay, <laughs> um, there's a, a thing in the, um, uh, real estate, they call it material defect. If you know there's a material defect going on somewhere, then, you know, in, in all good conscience, you have to state it. And I think you're creating a, an attractive nuisance here by that dock influencing what's going on with that neighbor's line next door. I've seen it. I've seen it from the water. I've seen mm -hmm. it from the land. And uh, my question is, if you think that there's a building permit or a zoning issue that is unmet or unresolved, should we still make a vote because it's strictly wetlands issues? Because my experience with these boards the last 20 years is it's just the opposite. If there's a building and zoning question out there, you don't move forward until that's resolved. So question I have is, is it considered, considered a structure um, under building code? Is it have required to zoning um, setbacks, which in that zone are probably 15 or 20 feet? which means he can't go near that littoral line if it's within 15 feet. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking, if that's not an issue, I have no problem with it, and it's right. outside the board's purview. It is outside the board's purview. Thank you. But at, at the, I will say at the last meeting, that was the thing that the Conservation Commission com concluded that he needed to have a building permit to construct a dock. That is part, part of, the of the yeah. Requirement. So if this goes through, then he records it, then he can go get his building permit. And then maybe the building inspector will say, no, you have to abide by certain things. In the um, meantime, that's part of the building inspector's In the meantime, is he allowed judgment. to do any more work on that dock? It's already done. There's no work proposed, right? We don't propose any additional work. We're here basically just to explain as an after-the-fact filing. There is no additional work. I was told otherwise. What were you told? That there was going to be three posts and a uh, rope fencing on the left side so that the other side of the boat next to that gentleman's property, uh, the other side of that dock wouldn't be accessed. Okay. Could I Are ask through the chair? Through the chair. Yes. Can I ask him how he found out this information that he's I don't giving think to it's the commission? I don't think it's relevant. So is there any more proposed work in addition to this application in front of us? what he said. I was going to put three posts and a rope so the children wouldn't even jump off that side. Okay. That could be shown as part of the building permit if, uh, if it's so required. Okay. Is, are the posts going into the water? No. Oh. They, so even, they sit the on water. top of the dock. Okay. Okay. Not even on the edge. On top. All right. I just one other thing. If kids are jumping um, off, name and address, please. I'm sorry, that's okay. Tom Kalinowski, 86 Peters Cove Road. Mm -hmm. If the kids are jumping off, which they have before, and I, I, I want the kids to have fun also, but they jump off and it's right next to the engine of our boat. So mm -hmm. if it were angled over a few feet, it would be very beneficial. Okay. So I think in front of the board tonight is the location of the dock. I think we can try to talk about if it was slightly angled, <coughs> would the application change? Or if it stays the same? Uh, it's to already... This board? Yes. No. So, th as far as protecting the resource area, it's yeah. already constructed. It was constructed off-site um, during the low, f low times. Um, does anybody else have any comments besides Tom? No? One more comment. I okay. just have one other, one other yep. comment. question. If you, if you think of <coughs> the original permit when he built this house in 2008, he's now widened his opening by double. He's got a, another dock there, and he's got a boat lift. <coughs> so when you look at his property, it's almost totally built out. If the conservation, mm -hmm. co like every square footage of the front has been changed and augmented, mm -hmm. if the conservation committee allows, if 
everybody on the lake to do that, everyone's going to extend their property into the lake like Steve's doing now. How is it extending into the lake? Well, because he's got this dock extending the lake. He's got another dock to the right of it extending into the lake and a boat lift on it. So I think we just need to look at protecting the resource area. Steve, do you have any other comments? I was just wondering, I'm just curious, it seems like the sticking point is the angling. Yes. Is the applicant against angling, re-angling it? I'm hot of hearing, I didn't quite All right, is the applicant it. against re-angling it? So that it is more in line with the property line. If, if I might add to the Bob, let me speak. Mm -hmm. the Bob. Hmm? I'd have to look at it. Okay. Okay. Is the property line what you have marked as fence here? Yes. Uh, I'd like to make another comment when it's my okay. turn. Um, and the reason for locating the dock here rather than, you know, so many feet. There's no room over there. If you look at the picture. Mm -hmm. There's an opening. There's a boat ramp. Yeah, there's a boat right there, there now to the side of that dock, so and it dock. covers up the other. Whose boat is that? That's to the left is our boat. It's, How it's close are you to the dock? <coughs> I'm about one. 14 feet from his dock, so there's you about. Know where the boat is to your dock. The boat on the left is my boat. And yep. It's maybe five feet away now. His dock That's is right. it on a, away. Is it on um, an anchor? Or? No, it's on a dock. It looks like though that it's that's my other dock. Right. Where that's Tom's dock. That's my dock, which is probably ten feet away from his property line. Okay. So, so what most people on the lake dock. do is they yes. keep their docks in front of their uh, own the house, side, generally I speaking. Think. Oh yes, I think you're right. Yeah. Could I, could I say something? Sure. Yeah. Can I get up to the Sure. Yeah. <coughs> So there's such a thing in the legal uh, profession called an attractive nuisance. And what that means is you attract trouble. You attract a nuisance that somebody's going to have a problem with. If this littoral line is true, in fact, we have no jurisdiction mm -hmm. other yeah. than the building. Yeah. If that's true. I, I want that proven for myself as part of the record. Whatever happens, I'm going to request that. This dock here, if you carry that line out straight, it goes right through that dock. Mm -hmm it's creating an attractive nuisance. Mm -hmm. He puts up a rope, he puts up some posts, things like that. There's nothing to say kids that come there aren't going to swim next to that fella's boat. It's um, a liability waiting to happen that I don't want the town of Douglas to be a part of. I live on that lake. I know that squabbles happen between the neighbors all the time. Mm -hmm. I think this is inherently unfair to the gentleman in the audience. But again, and I'll close with this, if the littoral line proves he has rights mm -hmm. that the other man didn't realize, then we have no jurisdiction. The material defect here is there is no setbacks between that dock that he put in illegally and um, setbacks of the line. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. So if we make, uh, and I'm not making a motion, but if we do make a motion, I would ask the board to consider that no work um, goes forward unless it's proven that the zoning and building, which of course is the same guy, I think Larry Lynch, mm -hmm. makes the decision as to that issue specifically, setbacks, and I don't care about the building permit, but if a setback and zoning issue comes into play, I feel the town is opening itself up to exposure because I know that law. If this gentleman is right about the littoral thing, then I, I digress, and that's the end of it. And then the neighbor will if have not, to. If not, the neighbor owns half your dock. And yeah, we we're opening ourselves up yeah. to trouble. So uh, let's get back to the application, as it is. Um, Excuse me. Yes. You say the neighbor owns half the dock. How, how so? Well, he's saying he's not quite sure about what you're saying on this property oh, okay. line. Where the dock is connected to the wall yeah, is on line. his property. It is not on the neighbor's yeah, property. Yeah, but you just can't go willy-nilly into the wet the water and say, I'm taking that and I'm not. But, okay. again, I don't know this phrase, littoral lines. I mean, so that's one of the issues that's ongoing with this pond, is people own land on the edge of the pond and nobody owns the land under the water. How do you feel about this? 
I feel like it's completely out of CONCOM's jurisdiction. The dock is connected to his property. Okay. It's not connected. So I guess we have two choices. You can We can make a decision as it's presented, or you could maybe take a look at <coughs> um, revising the location. So as far as the applicant's concerned, you can make that decision if you'd like. What we would request is that you close the public hearing mm -hmm. and issue an order of conditions with a condition. And the condition being, as this gentleman has stated, that we have to meet all of the requirements for the zoning and the building department. We're not, we don't uh, consider ourselves, he doesn't consider himself to be above that. Mm -hmm. But what we would like to do is to be able to go to the building inspector, building mm -hmm. zoning, and, and say we have been before the Conservation Commission, mm -hmm. we close the hearing, mm -hmm. and the condition is that it must meet your, your approval. Mm -hmm. So in other words, this is the first hurdle. Could I weigh in on that? Or? No, let me just talk <coughs> to Steve for a second. I, not, it, I, it seems simple, but it, if, if he place that in, in, in the projection of the property line, would that satisfy the abutters? Problem is he can't because the angle of the wall is that he has to go to the original angle, I think. Can I say one thing? No. Yeah. I've already angled the dock. The dock is not perpendicular with the wall. No, it is yeah. angled towards my property. I imagine Don't you have some carpentry skills and you can make it whatever angle you'd like. Yes. I do have carpentry skills. Would it be a problem to angle it more? Because it seems like it's in line right. with roughly with the other line, right? I mean, if you took that and did this, does that create a lot of problem for you? I thought it was fair where it was. There's nothing out there that it's bothering. No, but the issue here is that you have a property line, and the way the lots were created, they, they're at an angle, so that where the, the lot lines of the abutter are parallel where it meets the water, the angle causes... <laughs> yeah, the heartache is when it, then it veers off. But again, if you're right, then I'm, I'm fine that I with it. I, think um, I, would, I would make a suggestion. I don't think Mr. Vagnus would have a problem with that. But basically, we can rotate. We can rotate this dock well within the expertise of Mr. Vagnus to have it be parallel with the property line. Even though, because the co the perception here is that this is his line. We've had it surveyed. We know the line is correct. And the dock is crossing over that extension of the line, mm -hmm. which is why I brought in the, uh, mm -hmm. the line the of view of the abutter or what have you. Yeah. So and what we could do is extend it the 20 mm -hmm. feet, just like that, parallel to that line. I don't think okay. that... Is I that going to involve any... New construction of the footings underneath. No, not really. Well, the thing is, yes, if we would be. I would slide would the footings. That's moving the, the same footings exact over. ones. Okay. You're not going to yeah. slide them in the season. You do it when the water's yes. down. I have to do this when the water's out. Yeah, yeah. when the water's down. Uh, I would like to ask Mr. Bagdus okay. if you would um, pro offer to your neighbor uh, a gentleman's agreement that you won't use that side of the dock until this issue is resolved. I'm just. It's not well, a condition. So. Um, a butter. Do you hear what he's saying to follow yeah, his property line out and angle it to be within that line? I, we so never use the other side to so this So it will be parallel to the That's property line? Yeah. yeah. That yes. That sounds reasonable. Um, we the only thing that I, that I would be concerned about is six months, a year, two years <coughs> from now, coming back to the committee again after the situation is gone with another attachment to that dock. Yeah, but well, then it'd be in violation again. So he's going to come back with an as-built plan, show us what's actually there to close out the the order, and the, you're gonna. That's the way that it's going to remain, unless he comes back and for another application. But the, fa I, the fact is, we are sitting before the town. We're on television. Everybody's watching it. Is that your intention to extend it some other point or not? Extend it? No. So you, you heard your neighbor. He's worried that you'll add to it another time. And you're not going to use our side of it, Steve. Never. We haven't. Right. And if you make it parallel, we're probably that. I think that would be fair. Okay. So All right. Let's good move neighborly on. Thing it's really a convenience dock. It's not the main dock. It's okay. A, it's a convenience. Okay. All right. So um, I'll entertain a motion. 
I'll make to a motion. close the public hearing. To close the public hearing. <coughs> Issue no, the order. Okay. Order conditions predicated on conditions I'd like to okay, add. Okay, wait, hold on. So she'll second your uh, closing the public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And now you want to make your motion, like but let's think about the conditions. Yeah. Um, so Yes? Special. Uh, Steve? I would, shorten, I would shorten the time frame instead of three years, maybe at one year. To do the activity? It, it, the permit's good for to a year. To and slide then, it? And, and then add that the as bill should be accompanied, should be should be submitted before the permit expires. You don't have a problem with that, do you, Mr. Baggers? Doing this within a year's time? Do it within one year. Yeah. No, because it's been there a year already. So we'll do it. We'll oh, do February. It with, everything we'll will be done within one year. Okay. That's going to cost you a year from the permit. Okay. I'd like to make a motion with conditions. Okay. Go for it. What is it? what is your motion? <laughs> so I make a motion to uh, accept the plan uh, as presented, with the exception of uh, the the existing dock to be moved to be in line with the property line, and secondly to include a written um, opinion from Larry Lynch, Billing and Zoning Officer, regarding setbacks and the legality of the location. That's a separate thing. We're, we can't condition this project with that. I thought that you condition. said we could. No, you can find that out. But he is the zoning enforcement officer. He's got not okay. nothing to do with that. So, so scratch that last one, scratch and you're, issu last you're issuing it, right? So we issue. You don't approve. You issue the order. But how can he put up his um, posts and which is crazy because it's so it's minimal. It's nothing to do with uh, the. We jurisdiction. don't care about that either. It's above no. the water. It's not okay. in the water. Okay. So I make the motion to approve the plan, uh, as issue. stated. Issue the order. Issue the order conditions. Change the angle. Change the angle to uh, parallel. Parallel, the parallel with the fence. To the existing fence and property line on the east side of Mr. Baggett's problem. <laughs> Wait, I'm good at this. Want a Did we put the one year in there? Yeah. Well, within one and year. Yeah. And have all activity. She's a friendly amendment on that. All activity, including the as built, within one year. So that this is over and goes away for everybody. Okay, then yes, and second. Okay, motion to be made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did you get all that? So <coughs> we will probably have that by the end of the week for you to. We just have to add. Building the inspector's office. Yeah, yeah. Maria. Did he pay us fine? Yes, he did. Yeah, he gave you the receipt. Did you want that receipt back? You want a yeah, coffee? if you don't mind. I'll um, have Maria make you a coffee because I don't know why there was a note in there right. for the fee. Could Thank I just you. request clarification of relative to the billing inspector and the zoning? How do we? You can speak it? with him directly. He's okay. here tomorrow night. Okay. Tomorrow night. So and then you're, you're, but we need to talk. You're yes. agreeing not to do the posts and the rope right. until you talk to him. Is that right? Yes. Is that in the condition or just the gentleman's no. agreement? No. <laughs> it's above the hey, water. Hey, don't yell at me like that. Oh, you haven't so heard me yell. When water's out and I want to do my post, I'm all right. Yeah, so you're going to slide that over. Yeah. Right, I'll give you a new plan. We'll submit a new plan to the board. Thank right. you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Okay, next up, 750 Public Hearing, 117 Perry Street, Morrison Court. <laughs> Holy cow, is that in Italy, Margaret? Is that one? That bridge in Italy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, bridge. We should have done that. Oh, Roman. <laughs> yeah. Doc, Doc. yeah, where is that in town? Actually, technically, <laughs> if it's not transporting water, it's a viaduct. <laughs> oh, man, stop showing off. Thank you. I know, right? Okay. Town of Douglas Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing for Orbs and Corp on July 16, 2018 at 7.15 p.m. in the Municipal Center, 29 Devo Street, for work to be done pursuant to the Town of Douglas Wetland Bylaw and the Wetland Protection Act, Mass General Law 131, Section 40. The proposed work location will be done on 117 Parry Street. 
and involves proposed construction of a single family house septic system and well. Proposed construction activities are within 100 foot buffer zone of bordering vegetated wetlands. Okay. okay. Okay, for the record, my name is Margaret Bacon. Okay. I'm uh, an engineer with Civil Site Engineering, and I'm here representing our client and uh, requesting a permit to construct a single family house, uh, proposed in ground pool uh, at 170 Perry Street. Um, so here's the wetland line back here. Here's the 25 foot buffer zone, the 50 foot buffer zone. Here's the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, proposed house, just a small back corner is within the, uh, the 100 foot. Uh, the potential buyer uh, wants to put a pool in the back. And then the proposed septic system for a four bedroom house is in the front uh, with and that's not in the buffer zone at all. And then also a uh, proposed well is also in the back. Uh, just uh, probably about uh, 70 feet from the wetlands. And we've got, where's the 50 the again? At uh, the pool edge? Right here, it's the 50. Okay. It's a fortune, a and proposed yeah. lawn clearing is? Uh, the erosion control limits and construction limits. Okay, and we no, have any, Notable <laughs> things determining that that's the 50, that they can't go further than the 50, like any planting, split rail fencing, boulders. Um, no, because you're, no. you're creeping as far as what is this? The one? fence is outside the 50. What is this right it's here? It's 34.8 feet. It's a, a grade. That's as close as I am to the wetland. It's a it's a one little grade line. So when we're getting pretty close, that's a fence for the pool. <coughs> Margaret, the ninety four where it says ninety four, that's your limit of grading. That's that's a, a yeah. There's ninety four and then there's ninety three. All right. So from ninety three to the edge of uh, uh, your erosion control, how many feet? Uh, ninety three to the edge of the erosion control. Like this much, this much. Yeah, I'm. Hey, I'm on your side. Five on this feet. Okay. Martin, 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 up here. I'm five feet. You're five feet from the edge of this this last grade line. That's as close as I am to the erosion control. And you're not like three to one or anything like that, right? Slopes. No, only up in the front. So that's just a very it's minor just, just taper to tie, grade. Just to tie into existing grade. And that's you said all. you had a proposed buy or something. Is it on deposit? Uh, or is this just for future reference so anybody can come in here and build a pool? No, I believe uh, there is a potential buyer that wants a. Well, let's find that out. No, it's not I important. Just curious. Right. So, so your uh, proposed pool is right at the edge of the 50. Uh, no, that's no. correct. Here, oh. Here's the 50. Yeah. Why can't you go close to the house with a pool? Well, you want to give a little room between the. Uh, really? I don't usually see that much room from a foundation to a pool. How, how well, far is it? It's 20 feet. Oh, yeah. okay. It's going to be past the deck. You don't want to jump off the roof and yeah. well, I do. You don't. go so in the, the pool. The um, <coughs> are you concerned with lawn creep the the on that back side? Yeah. Well, the pool area. There's going to be a fence around the pool. Right, and then right. he's got. they're going to have five feet <laughs> to mow the lawn, or you think it's going to revegetate on that, um, well. that graded area? It's 34. Hey. It's not I, I don't know what the guy's going to do in the future. Right. Well, so we so typically, when we're really close, we typically have an indicator that says, you know, you're not going to go any further. I mean, did you have a suggestion? Oh, oh, on where they wouldn't go any further? Right. Mm -hmm. with, the, yep. with the yard. You're not proposing yeah. like a uh, deed restriction or something, No, right? not a deed restriction. No, what, well, like what are you saw saying? the previous Bowlers. property had the the Bushes. clearing line, the tree line. This doesn't have that. They don't like to do boulders. That just that it doesn't that. Yeah. look good. It's out of place. If you start uh, mowing into that area, it's a loss of habitat. But you're just talking about the 50 to 100, aren't you? It's well, 34. It's 34. It's okay. At, from so that grading. You're concerned with yeah. 34 to 50? And it's actually 30. You've got a no touch so, at so 30. So this is the erosion control limits. If you keep mowing, you're mowing past the erosion control limits. Well, well, if they're in place, why is she mowing beyond it? They're not, not going to be there all the time. Well, I have a mistake, no? Something. Yeah, well, when you put erosion control, are we, are we staking those things nowadays? 
You stake them yes. or you just lay them down? No, we the, the mulch sock, we stake them. So would you consider your erosion control of mulch sock to be your edge uh, limit of work? Yes, sir. That's no? correct. Mm -hmm. but, and I, I've got mm -hmm. it labored mm -hmm. that How right on the plan. Last? How long do the mulch socks last, my day? Oh, actually, I got I got straw waddles here. Straw waddles. Oh, I need straw waddles. What's the difference? Uh, well, usually we'll do mulch socks. Uh, they're much thicker and heavier on a steep slope. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're, this is pretty flat here. I, I don't anticipate really anything flowing. What's right. better for you? What? What's better for the installer? Mulch socks or this other thing? Because well, I'm not familiar with this. Last well, time I did this, it was A lot of times, times the mulch socks. We'll use the mulch socks, like I said, if we have a steep terrain here. What's your preference on this particular site? Uh, the straw waddles. Okay, I thanks. don't think that's all that's really okay. needed on this. Okay. No, because that's not. So we're not, talking not about know the edge of a, a line to a. a well, we just put that in order. In the future. In the future, so we're 30 feet away from the wetland, from grading, from the erosion control. Is 30 what? feet. Okay. The future, the future of the lot. Into what? Clearing, mowing. It tends to be if he's got a fence installed, and you've got five feet. Five feet to what? Thirty of, of oh, thirty. What's wrong with that? It's a fence. She's not gonna. She's not proposing lawn. Are, are you Margaret or not? What? What are you proposing? Um, uh, where's north on this? Right here. Yeah. What are you yeah. proposing west of the fence? This yep. way. Yep. Everything. See this? The the pink line here. That's yep. erosion control construction limits. That's what? all going to be clear. What are you proposing from here to here? Probably. He's probably going to clear that. Whether he. Don't say probably. Well, he's going to clear it, whether it's lawn area or mulch area back there. Which are you proposing? Because the board is hung up on okay, this. Okay, well, lawn area. Okay. Lawn area. I don't have an issue with that. I just want it yep. defined. So. so it needs to be defined in the field so that it doesn't end up being the 20, the 15. Well, don't they do that all the time? Though? We stake it in. Well, we stake no, it I'm in talking row. about next year. Oh. Right. You're after saying this you have house. erosion controls, and that's great. Yeah. That's fantastic. It's, it's for the future, yes. Can I get up? Again? Sure. Yes. Could I see that a second? So I think the issue is you've got that, Margaret, just um, Sorry, man, I hate That's to right. take over the whole meeting. But if you do this, are you saying that you'll never do this, Margaret? Because you've got a funky angle there off of this fence. Are you okay with that? <laughs> well, put it this way. Then he's going to have to go in and do a lot of tree clearing, everything else to be able to do that. But, uh, but all this, all these trees and stuff are not being disturbed back here. So you're okay with that? Well, yeah, that goes with any property in Douglas. Anybody can do that two mm -hmm. or three years down the road, mm -hmm. you know? So basically for this project, no, there's no disturbance beyond that erosion control line. Mm -hmm. I know in the past we've required their split rail mm -hmm. plantings, something. something to tell the homeowner that they're not allowed to tree clear. Um, five feet is <coughs> a small area to try to get by without creeping I think, into I think it's towards the wetland. How far, Margaret, from the edge of the apron of the pool? Let's say you put out a concrete apron. From that apron to the fence, are you? Twenty feet. From that apron to this, how far are you? From it for the erosion control? No, nope, just for the fence. Just from the for fence the to fence. The I'm ten feet. I don't think it's uh, it's irrational. Um, okay. Gordon, do you have any comments? Questions? So as you said in the past, we've requested some things to make sure we don't have the creep. A visual deterrent, yes. Uh, um, should we be proposing something like that? I think the applicant needs to propose that. Okay. Now, what, what, can, what if uh, it's? I just hate to see those boulders. It yep, really. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So what if the fence got moved back a little to give a little more room and be. Yeah, I think you should do that anyway because you're not going to be able to mow a five-foot swath. If you come in a few feet, you'll give yourself room to... <coughs> right, but beyond the five feet, not necessarily the fence. I think if you just 
fenced in the backyard, then that would be one thing, and then you revegetate the back and you're not getting behind it, but now it's fencing in the pool, and then you still have room uh, for a lawn area on right. the other side. Right, the rest of the space. You don't yeah. like that idea, or you do like that idea? No. I just don't think it will help what I'm concerned with. Which is With what? the lawn creep, or um, further affecting the buffer. Thing is, so we're within the 50-foot buffer. She has to do an as-built anyway, so she has to prove to Steve that the work it's as... I'm not worried about her. I'm worried about the the person uh, living there for 20 years. How can we worry about years. somebody that, hap that goes on That's why we try that. our because best that's what most of the problems are. to give the person an idea of this is your, this is your limit. Well, as Margaret said, the new person has the right to come back, so why not permit it any way you guys feel like it with the conditions that anything beyond a certain area, which in this case she's asking for the erosion control line, to act as a no disturbed look. So anything beyond that is untouched. It, it's part of the as-built that it's proven that that's what happened. She um, creeps in the fence back a little bit to, to create lawn, because you're not going to create lawn one side and then the other and have to go all the way around the house to mow the lawn. I know. And I know you think that's funny, but... I, I don't think it's going to happen with five feet. Well, let's make it eight so feet. Yeah, let's move give the fence. Feet. I'll, I'll, I'll revise the plan and move the fence back, all right, so there's more room. Leave the erosion control where it is. Yeah, I don't want her to revise the plan. Just let's permit it the way it is and say um, moving that fence three feet. If That's my discussion. Okay. It's not a move. Other than the boulders, is there a su suggestion that the applicant would be agreeable to either plantings or some kind of um, fence well, limitation? Plantings. We could do some plantings, but my only thought is if they're just going to get lost along the edge of the wood right. line there, right. you know. Where right, you they would have to be any of plantings. Where would you guys want the plantings? Along the erosion control. Uh, limit of disturbance. Mm -hmm. Why? If that's the limit, what what is adding more plantings to it? It deters from lawn creep and destruction. Well, what about, uh, uh, well, I know what in Sutton they require those uh, wetland placards. Mm -hmm. What's no, that? I'm it's open to anything that's just the Just little applicant. signs that go up there, no disturbance, wetland, no disturbance, mm -hmm. wetland, no disturbance. Yeah, it's so window dressing. I don't think the people owning the house should have to have signs in the back, but that's just my opinion. I'm not making a motion or anything. Oh. But I think that, you know, being new to the board, we should be open to each other's opinions and discussions and I can't see putting placards up. If if she says the work's going to get done, and is who's the owner? Dan Heaney? Dan Heaney. If Dan Heaney said the work's going to be completed, I believe him. So I say, you know, if you give the order conditions, you use the existing thing as it is, the um, erosion control line as the limit of work. When you put those straw things down, you don't dig them in, right? You just lay them on the ground, and they naturally... That's correct, and you know, we stake them in. Yeah, it, it's not going to affect anything by adding any more plantings, but if you guys really like that idea, wherever they're disturbing the house and the cesspool or septic system, let them dig up some natural stuff and put it along that boundary. But to pay for plants for nursery, it's, it's, it's out of line, is my opinion. Okay, Steve, have you been out to the site? I have. Okay, do you have some pictures? I don't, because it's so thick. Yeah. Okay, looks like a forest. It looks like a forest. <laughs> Okay. Um, have you checked the uh, BVW line? I have. Okay. You know, it's, it's accurate. I mean, a couple of flags were kind of a little, little bit of a distance, but I saw some the previous flagging out there, so... Yeah, yeah, actually, uh, it was... Margaret looked pretty conservative. It was done uh, flagging years ago, uh, back when we did a lot of work on Linden Joel Street. Smith's property? Yes, and so then I reflagged, and lo and behold, my, my flagging kind of overlaid a lot of those old flags. were like... 15 years old. Mm -hmm. Close enough. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty, that's yeah. close enough. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, anyone from the audience have any comments, <laughs> questions about this application? No? Okay. Board? It's your pleasure. I make a motion to close the hearing. Okay, there's a motion. Uh, I'll ask a question first. Okay. Mike, of course. What did, were you suggesting for the boundary back there that we, we we don't want boulders and we don't want ugly things so you mentioned something that placards they're, they're little signs that's really the you know what are they made of uh they're just uh plastic i'm just curious now don't everybody laugh do you take these things and nail them into a tree 
No, actually, they, you, they're on little posts. I mean, we have to... Uh, yeah, a little, like... Right, just to make people aware. No disturbance. Butland Dairy knows disturbance. I'm against that idea. I don't think it's necessary. It's better than nothing. It's better than ugly things. No, nope, I'm against it. But <laughs> you can present your, um, whatever you call it, offer or what do you think? My issue with the placards is that I, I agree that I don't think sticking plastic things in the yard is going to do anything. I think they're going to wash out and be, be gone within a couple of years. I, I, I really think there needs to be plantings or a fence. What do you like about the plantings? What does that do for you? Because it denotes the boundary and it's part of the natural environment that would be there anyway. How, how can a line that's 300 feet long of undisturbed soils not denote the boundary? I mean, what would you propose for plantings? What would you like to see? Mountain laurel. Like a decorative thing? Yeah. Jeez, I think there's a lot of mountain laurel out there. I bet there is. Yeah, so I bet it's why all there. Why don't you offer to replant yeah. them well, and let's no, get on no. with it? I mean, it is I pretty. I don't even think she'd have to replant them. It, I, uh -huh. But you're asking for a boundary actually, line. Actually, there's a lot of white I don't pine. Want to have to pay for it's the plants, pretty, actually, all. it's pretty thick back here uh, in some spots. So, I mean, I, I, it's, you know, once he clears up to this limit, I mean, it, then it's mm -hmm. kind of a wall of vegetation there. It's not like we it's also thin. have done um, split rail fence with openings couple pieces. How many plants would you like to see on that line? And Margaret, what's the line? How far from the corner of the pool? Let's say 50 feet in either direction, how long? Well, I guess that'd be 100 feet. Yeah, but i just like to say, I don't, I don't know how. We've already got a lot of plantings here. Steve, do you have something? I can show you what it might look like. Okay. Oh, geez. Right. Quite blurry. So you're, but you're saying that in this area. What are those plants, Steve? That's, Excuse me. That's okay. what. That's the uh, what was um, those these plantings here. Yeah, I'm, I'm against it. We're, we're just adding a layer that somebody's going to have to go and water, and somebody's going to have to go check out, and it's just. You have to water it. We're in the wetlands. It's not a wetlands. It's a bordering vegetated wetland. It's, it's thirty the feet out. That's the buffer. It's the buffer. We just don't want the buffer to be encroached any further than it's already than we're already allowing. Yeah. The, 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 differ the difference with that picture though we have here is like a lot of undergrowth. Yeah. You know, where it's, there's a lot of see the, the a lot of yeah. right. So forested upland. So you, you right now you're gonna be walking through a, a layer of Yeah, I, I think uh, Tracy there's mechanisms in place, excuse me Margaret, to, to do what you want to do without putting plants up that may or may not survive. I just think it's it's adding a layer that's unnecessary. Well, it's the board's pleasure. I would like to see something applicant suggested. Right. Okay. Yeah, me too. Yes, applicant. Oh, Dan, you need 44. Right. Right. Yes. If I, that's a job I had done previously. If I put plantings like that every 25 feet yeah. for anything that's within 50 feet of the disturbed area, would that be? Would you prefer the split rail, a couple pieces, or, or the plantings? I think the, the plant. You liked those plantings? Yeah. What would you suggest for a plant? I'm not even sure what they are. <laughs> I just went and bought them. They were, they were about 18 inches high, and they're going to obviously grow. So, okay, time. you're basically looking for a denotation of one area to the next, not necessarily whether it's high or low. Would that be safe? Correct. Assessment? Yes, but I'm looking for them to be native species. So, so if those are just something out of the Walmart uh, lot, like, like I don't want them to no. be invasive. And you put those 25 feet? Um, I think they were a little closer than that. On they look closer. They look like yeah. 10 or 15. Yeah. But that was... That I bought that approved. I didn't agree to that. I just bought it, and that's okay. I'll make a motion when the time's right. <coughs> that's okay. all pretty good. We can condition, if you so chose, <coughs> um, the motion. So, so I still have a motion on the table to close the public hearing. I second it, or did I make it? You made it. Darn it! It's been so long. Okay. I'll second. All right. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Close the public hearing. Aye. One. Do we still get to make the issues? Yes. Okay. Yes. Aye. Okay. All right. Um. Point of order, Chief, Chairman, Chairwoman. When we close a hearing, that's it. No We're information can. No new information can be submitted. Okay. We can still have discussion. So the applicant is out of it. Now we decide. 
of yes. how to with conditions. Thank you. So we would want to move to issue the order of conditions with the following conditions. So make a motion or not? You can make the motion if you would like, or you can allow what somebody What if uh, the three of us want to make a motion? Oh. We fight it out, or how does One that of work? us makes a motion. You can discuss make your a motion. conditions. I'd like to make a motion. Or do you guys want to discuss a little more? We like okay. to, we'd like to get out of here sometime. I'd like to make I a motion. Today. So okay. Uh, conditioned on So So who is making the motion? Who would like to make the motion? You want to make it? I'd love to make it. Go ahead. I'd like to make a motion to accept this plan as written with the following conditions. And issue the order of conditions. And order the issue the order of conditions with beyond what our, do you call it a template or what do you call it? Our standard, standard conditions. conditions, these following conditions. That the plan is accepted, you know, as is, with the exception of the fence that's located on the plan to be moved in three to four feet, so the barest minimum is eight feet from the corner of the fence to the erosion control. Um, can I have an exact number of moving the fence in? Well, that's Margaret. She's the expert. Please. Uh, I'm going to say five feet. Five we feet. move the five feet, Margaret. Is that okay? Just the fence. Everything else just is the, fine. Just the fence. By the back. The back. Yes. Back move, it, fence. move it east. Yeah. Can you five move it feet. east five feet? Yep. Okay. With the condition that the fence gets moved five feet, mm -hmm. and further that the erosion control, um, as denoted on the plan, serves as a um, edge of work, and is further implemented every 25 feet with native species of the applicants choosing. Which will be approved by this board. Well, let's approve it now then. Exist. Let's get them a choice. Or isn't there a standard Massachusetts list that you can choose from? There is. Just I mean, let us know. You did a nice job, to a nice job before here. Before you plant them. Dan, were those wetland species? They were not. You don't put a wetland species in upland, right? No. There's there's some buffer. There's some good buffer zone plants, uh, fruit bearing shrubs so that you could. I'll, I'll let make us know, right. and Steve will yes. tell okay. us. Sure. And we'll just. But they're not going to come back to us for that. No. Just do it. Yeah. And that's it. Do we have any other additions or amendments to his motion? I was going to say the 25 feet. Could it be 15? Please. I oppose that. Okay. Which right. 25 feet? Um, the distance between plantings. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll let the uh, big guy answer for that. I'm sorry. All right. 15 is awful close. That's very expensive. How about 20 Let's feet? Let's do 20. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying that this is 25 in the picture we have now? No. So how many plants? plants Are you okay with 20? Okay, line. we'll go. We'll split it down. We'll go 20. All right. Okay. 20. Yeah. 20. All right. So we're going along the the, the construction limit. So yeah. that's about correct. Almost 200 feet. Do you guys feel like we need to do the whole construction limit? 200 feet. Or just so that'd be 10. Talking about 10 plants. Yeah, 10. Plants. 10. Okay. Yeah. So no problem. Right. Margaret, don't try to pull fast. Okay. So are you so okay with that amendment to, to your up. motion? I need to stand up. So are you asking, Katie, that this goes all the way up here too? What's the 200 foot line? The one on the back? I would like it to be the whole that whole line, yeah. Is there any reason we have to do that, in your opinion? What do you prefer? Whoa, 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 whoa. Is, no, that's wrong? Uh, yeah, let's sit down. Um, let's just see the scope so we can go to the 50, the limit of the 50, and then around. So those two is fine? Here is yeah, 50. Yeah, that's a really good and idea. This is 50. Uh, that's so a good idea, as so. long as you're on the 50. Okay, so sounds good. There yeah. to there. Fair. Okay. No wonder you're chairman. Nice job. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so motion's been made. Do I hear a second? <coughs> Seconded. Good. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. And then uh, you're all set, right? No, I think I get the next one up. Oh, you do? Yes. 153 well, Man Truck Street? Yes. <laughs> okay. We did that. RDA. No. We, didn't we do that one, the very nope. first thing? No, nope. the very first thing was Maple Street. Okay, so this is a request for determination from 153 Mantrog mm -hmm. Street, Russell Shrine. Yes. Okay, uh, go for it. All set? Okay. Yes. Um, I'm requesting a negative determination uh, for our client to uh, basically, he's putting in a new septic system and he's relocating his existing well, which is right there, uh, to over next to his driveway. 
Okay. Here's the, uh, the adjacent wetland. Here's the 50-foot buffer zone. I got the new well uh, outside the 50-foot buffer zone with erosion control and a, a well sump uh, adjacent to it for when they actually drill the well. What's a well sump? Uh, like a depression, hay bale, you know. Slurry pit. Slurry pit, yeah. Well, let's go like that. I'm sorry. Thanks. Slurry pit. Uh, and then only minor, other minor activities is, you know, putting part of a septic tank is in the, just right on the 100 foot buffer line. Mm -hmm. And then all the, the septic si system's totally out of it. Mm -hmm. So as far as um, it's all within the existing lawn area? Yes. And you've got any trees to be removed? Uh, just for the septic, there's one tree over one here. One tree, okay. And, and nothing the size over here. on that? Uh, it's an eight inch. I think it's a Norway maple anyway, oh. so it's probably mm -hmm. just as well it's going. <laughs> Did I need to read the notice? Yeah, yeah you should read it. Okay. I'll just read the notice quickly. Sorry about no, that. No, I mean up in the top. Um, Looks like there's a lot. Okay, she's let me just read the marking. notice. Sorry. Oh. Sorry about that. It is a public meeting. But. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Town of Douglas Conservation Commission will hold a public meeting for Russell Shrine on August 6, 2018 at 8 p.m. in the Municipal Center, 29 Depot Street for a work to be done pursuant to the Town of Douglas Wetland Bylaw and Wetland Protection Act, Mass General Law, Chapter 30, 131, Section 40. The proposed request for determination of applicability work location is 153 Manchog Street and the applicant is requesting permission to install a well and part of a septic system within the 100 foot buffer zone. Part of a septic? Well, it's the septic tank. And then I'm putting in a new sewer line. That's right all. Right here. Yeah, there's an existing cesspool here right now. That's oh, okay. in, it's in total failure. So the okay. Why are you calling it a sewer line? What do you mean? Why? What, what do you mean a sewer line? line. From the or house to the septic? No, from this existing cesspool. Uh, they're going to eliminate that, yep. pump that, eliminate it, yep. and then yes. just connect, put a, a sewer line here to a septic tank. Yep. And then. Oh, okay. So everything else is out. That's correct. Septic's out anyway. Um, and was the plan approved by Board of Health? Uh, probably. Okay. Probably. All right. Make a note of that. Um, okay, so, so board, we've got the new sewer line, the pumping. It's going to be a, a, you know, traditional septic and a new tank, you said? New which tank. just nicks the corner yep. of the hundred. Okay. All right. So what we do for these, we either um, issue a positive determination, which means that they would have to file a notice of intent, like what has been presented, or it's a negative determination, and that means that they are good with this plan to do the work. It is a permit, so um, there's still jurisdiction that we can make sure that, um, you know, let's just say if any see there's erosion control so Steve can still check that to make sure that um, that's installed before the work begins so that nothing even comes with, this side. Even with a negative? Yes. You can also do a negative with conditions. How much leeway oh, do you have with negative? Can you do a negative between 50 and the hunt to 50 and the zero? Or and there's not? specific activities which we can talk about later um, but we can condition it so you can do a negative. You could condition with a negative? Yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. Is that new or It no? is a permanent, no. no. I'll make a motion. Okay. What's your motion? Uh, I propose a negative determination. Okay. Do we have to close with, the hearing? Uh, now the it's a public meeting. Extra requirements, as you mentioned. The, uh, we were going to condition the negative. With decision. Right. Well, which I don't conditions? Know. Just uh, version control yeah. to be installed yeah. and Steve to be notified before work begins? Yeah. I second okay. it. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Hey. Thank you. That was very true. Please make sure you call Steve. Yep. Thank Will you. do. Thanks again. You're okay. Take care. Public meeting 113 Bloodstone Road, Richard Hansen. Thank you very much. 
Town of Douglas Conservation Commission will hold a public meeting for Richard B. Hansen on August 6, 2018 at 8.10 p.m. in the Municipal Center, 29 Depot Street, for work to be done pursuant to the Town of Douglas Wetland Bylaw and the Wetland Protection Act, Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40. The proposed request for determination of applicability work location is 113 Ledgestone Drive, and the applicant is requesting permission to remove a storm damaged large white pine tree dead limbs remain in the tree approximately 25 percent of the limbs on the water side are missing let's elaborate on that <laughs> <laughs> your name and address for the record richard hansen 123 westfield drive cranston rhode island 2920. okay and tell us a little bit about what you'd like to do. <coughs> well, it's like a flagpole to me. Excuse me. <coughs> Nothing. He was looking at the flagpole. It looks like a flagpole. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Chop that down. <laughs> but the picture up there on display gives you a good view of what the tree looks like at the moment. <coughs> but the water side where all the limbs seem to come down and laid in the lake this past spring, which now have, have been cleaned up. <coughs> but it leaves that big void up on the top. There's still some broken limbs hung up in the tree. Uh, I've had an arborist look at it. Mm -hmm. He feels that, in all honesty, that it should come down, but it should have the blessing of this committee before he touches it. Okay. Did he say that the damage is making the limbs fall off, or what did he say? Well, I don't know what caused, other than a winter storm. Okay. Uh, our fear is it faces basically northeast, if we're looking northeast from here. Mm -hmm. If we got a northeast storm mm -hmm. and <clears throat> took that down, the tree that you, excuse me, the tree, that, the house that you see on the left is two years old that's right in the line of that tree should it come down. Mm -hmm. Is that your so house? No. It's the other one? The, yeah. the well property right? line is about a foot off the base of the tree. Okay. <coughs> is your guy going to climb it or bring a bucket truck in? Bucket in. And so you're proposing taking down the tree Correct. entirely? Correct. And grind the stump. And what? Grind the stump grind in the place. Stump. Any vegetation underneath that, on the bank's edge, it's concrete? Yeah. Okay. What's the proposal for the grindings? Grind the stump down, you create um, it'll be mulch. Regraded in plant grass. Yeah, within the hole. By the same guy? No. Do you have any questions? So typically we're concerned about the bank um, Erosion. Cover and well, yeah, erosion, but also um, the cover that it provides for the certain species underneath that. Um, like which ones? Fish prefer cooler water, and therefore we prefer more shade along the bank. That's been Native pretty fish. well eliminated by that. The limbs that have been removed. Well, it doesn't look like that in the <coughs> picture, though. Unfortunately, to see it, you'd have to be out in the lake to see it. No, what I mean is just even from the picture, it looks like it's creating quite a nice little shade there. No, on in the water. So it looks oh, like a you. rocky... Okay. So you said the top part kind of left is gone. Yeah, it, there's a split up top as well. Okay. And Arbor said it should come down because it's a danger or because the tree is unhealthy? Basically the danger. <coughs> the danger. But the limbs have been falling off over the, through the winters? It was a massive limbage that came down this past winter. Okay. Why, I don't know, other than <coughs> a severe storm. Yeah. Okay. Steve, have you been out to the site? Yeah. What's the condition of the tree? You can tell it's been, you can see the damage up on top. And usually when you get a solo pine like this and it's not protected, usually pines are in groves. And now it's so going to be... <coughs> Well, it's just going to get unbalanced. It's going to take too. long for the remaining limbs. And there's only there's a, there's a short life on pines. 
and then those 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 branches come down like missiles. Okay. So it's not protected at all by other growth of trees. Right. So. Okay. And then given the activity of the area, that area it's a shallow area. Rocky, very rocky. Well, there's some rocks in there, and so I, you know, with the habitat and then it's recreational. Mm-hmm. It's not like it's got a mountain oars overgrowing the banks, and mm -hmm. you know, I don't know how much habitat you really have. Mm -hmm. They'd probably get more shade from the boat and the dog yeah. sticking out. I don't have any shade trying to take. Okay. All right. Board watch your pleasure. I'd like to hear if there's any neighbors have an issue. Uh, it's just a public meeting, but if anybody else is here for this, you can chime in. No? We make a motion to close the hearing, or we're not in a hearing. <laughs> right, we're in a meeting. That's okay. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. Um, you're going to make a motion to issue a negative determination. I make a no motion to issue a negative <coughs> determination. I right, a motion. Do I have a second? Do we have? Do we want to have him check with Steve before his guy chops the tree down? Steve, are you okay with any straws, or, um, straw bales, or anything? Any protection I for the, the, question uh, of the, the grinding action? No. I mean, both properties are really immaculate. I'm sure the guy mm -hmm. gentleman's going to want to keep it that way. Yeah, especially if you go over that one foot. <laughs> right. Could be a tender area, but I don't think it'll be that bad. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, okay. I think it'll be a relatively fast process. Anyway. Hopefully so. Yeah. When you do an RDA, are the neighbors notified? And that's what no. you just read? No, there's just an advertisement. So how do we really know if the neighbors could care less or not? We don't, right? It's in the newspaper. So they do it's, know. It's, oh. an ad, it's advertised in the newspaper okay. only, not not a certified of butters yeah. or a certificate of mailing. Thank so you. I get a motion. I don't think we need any conditions. Okay, yeah, this is Okay, I'll move that we uh, issue a negative determination. He's already on um, the As long as the stump's going to be um, ground in place. He's got the motion. Oh. All I need is a second I'll with second. a friendly amendment that the stump to be ground in place, like you had stated. Yep. Aye. Okay, all those in favor? Uh, question first or not? Okay, we can have a question. What the heck are you laughing at me? It's my first meeting in 20 years. Now I forgot the question. You happy? <laughs> About the stump grinding in place? Darn it. I, I really forgot the question. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot, it's Tracy. Gonna, it's going to start happening once we get to the witching hour. So. It's About gone. The it's conditions. Your fault. No, okay. no, it's gone. All right, well, you'll have to forgive me. Um, motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to look at the picture, maybe? It'll yeah. bring you back memories. It's too late now. Just a question I had. So probably something about grinding. You can submit it in writing. Yeah, right. It's gone. Ooh. Okay. I'm getting triggered. I haven't um, had this experience in. Okay. Okay. So, Steve, can we talk about? Um, no, Violation Street. Woodward, 164 Perry Street. Yeah, so uh, I think the gentleman's here. So I Come on to the table. So that, like, that was Come on the over. The first time was where he had uh, the, the underground. Um, yes, the mattresses. Mattresses well, and, and, and yeah. materials. I've been in correspondence with him. Yeah. He picked it up. He yep. did everything he was supposed to. I okay. actually talked to Linda and she was fine with what he did. Okay. Really? So, yeah. She doesn't get along with anybody. Okay, <laughs> so um, so I do, do we issue a violation fee for him? I don't know. If it, it did you issue. receive a f no? Because no, I, I missed the last. You know, if it was really if he was, you know, if it was a potential violation. Yeah, so, so you didn't do any um disturbance of the buffer no, or no, no, throw any trash in the stream. No, no. Okay, so Steve, you checked it out. Yes. Everything's clean. Yep. Okay, and everything that is disturbed is outside the 100 on the near the house portion. Well, yeah. You think? Well, from outside the 100. From the BBW or from the stream, the bordering vegetated wetland. Yeah. Okay. Well, outside. How did the stuff get there? Just before a snowstorm was in the back of my truck. Okay. It was a burn pile. Bureaus and okay. two bureaus and some okay. random stuff. All right. Was there a road back there to no, the just area? Just the edge of my grass. Okay. So, what happened to the stuff that was there? Put it in the dumpster and had it hauled away. 
I must have grabbed the wrong file. Okay. Sorry. But, you know, I, I looked at it. Probably, I don't know, you, 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 you might not even been there. Probably a couple weeks ago, it might have been three weeks ago. And I saw it, it was one of a real hot day. So and Linda he had a dumpster there, and it was like. What? And Linda, I talked to Linda, she was in the yard, and so I just had my way out, got there. She's, it was right before the next meet, the last meeting that got Okay. Canceled. Okay. All right. Sarah, good. No more burn piles. <laughs> no. What's that? So no more no. burn piles by Nobody the river. Nobody wants to know why he's burning bureaus, huh? By the river. In magic. Okay. Cause it's all. all right. I Sounds all good. Simple. Well, I appreciate you coming in. And what was your name for the record? I'm sorry. Chad Woodward, 164 Perry. Thank you very Thanks. much, Chad. Hey, can I step outside for a second or not? Sure. Okay. I'll be right back, guys. Okay. <laughs> hey, Chad. going to be a hell of an adventure. <laughs> okay. Um, I got a phone call today about 260 so Southeast Main Street. Uh, okay. Never, he was never we'll so take We'll take you we'll take you next. Okay. The heard these guys have only just as long as me. What are you guys here for? Certificate of compliance. Yeah, which is, I guess, so why don't we take... Uh, oh, Anthony. So they were never we should have fine, right? It's Anthony, Haney, no. and then we can talk to these no, guys. No, I don't think there was no disturbance. Sorry. All right. Um, Come on, Gary. <coughs> okay. Man, I don't even go to stay up this late usually. Anthony, why don't you come up for yours? 283 Southwest Main Street, a request for a certificate of compliance. Yes. Okay, we have some pictures, Steve. Yeah. So I think the last time he came in front of us, you know, he modified the driveway a little bit. There's an asphalt plan. There's, they put grass on the right side of the driveway between the driveway and Bad Luck Pond. Um, this is the driveway coming in. This is the grass area. There's some plantings there where the turnaround is. This is the side slope on the right. This was on the right side. It was more of a driveway, so I think we modified it a little bit. So there's a nice little buffer between the driveway and the bed by pond. This is a septic when you first come in. It's a tight lot. The new members won't know it, but they seem Yeah, very tight. Um, do we have the request in one of these files? Should. Oh, I get it. On the miscellaneous area? Okay, so what we like to do is we like to have an as-built plan so that we can actually see, compare what was approved versus what is actually in the field. Um, do we have one of those, Steve? Yeah, that's, is that the as-built This is 2014. So this is the proposed. Do you have the other? No, I'm going to send one down. Yeah, I mean, it should be in the file. <coughs> yeah, it's, it's a copy of it. Is that an overlay, or do you have it, just the have existing? We have the red line one. We have the red line one? Somewhere. The file they want to go look at the file? Yeah. This is not an astro, right? That's supposed to be right. Yeah. This is oh, the yeah. asphalt, but it's yeah. not showing the red lines. Why? Because it's a copy. He's here for an asphalt. That's the deal. Um, certificate of compliance request. And the asphalt is the plan that goes along with that. Right. Do you have it? I do not. I am still looking. Is it in a different? I don't have this file here. Yeah, that's what the question is. Oh. Steve. <laughs> Well, he doesn't have a file. It's under mail. Okay. Try to see if this works. This see. is not a red oh, line. Oh, here's, here's a certificate of compliance. Not red line. No, no, no. Are you familiar with the site? Mm -hmm. Do you have any issues on the as built plan? I did not get a chance to look at what was put. You've been out there recently? Or yeah. Do you have any issues it's, with what's going on? It's been a little there? while, right? You've been yeah. working on it. Yeah. Do you have any issues with 
how it looks out on the site? Or no, the field? pictures look pretty close to what we've been spoken about. I don't know what he's talking about, Redland. So let's see. How do we know? Well, is this supposed I'm to be an sure ASCO? Yes, how this is for that? the Certificate of Compliance. Right. So if we take a look at This, well, okay. this existing shed bathroom to be removed, existing septic to be removed. It's all been done. Right, right. yeah. There's a lot of words here. <laughs> okay. Did the engineer typically come in with a certificate of compliance? Mm -hmm. That's a requirement. It's Water. a requirement? Mm -hmm. What's that mean? Um, on the request form. Mr. Ciccone, why isn't your engineer here tonight? Well, he's semi-retired. He just said, I don't know if he could make it. Was that Norman? No. So somebody else generally could have come, though, right? Norman did all the work on it. So I don't gotcha. see red line. I see the, um, have you taken a look at the plans? Yeah, I had the red line. I did the site walk. Yeah, that. you have it probably in your car. Okay. <laughs> so is the next step after this the recording of the uh, approval? Certificate of compliance. Yeah. Yes. So... When I walked it and I saw the red line, it all matched up. Everything looked good. Okay. So this is the request, typically what it looks like. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you see? Can you just roll through the pictures one more time? Looks good. This one's Ooh. red. We got a copy and then we have the red. I found it. You found the red one? Yeah. Nice. What's the significance of it? You can see what has been proposed. The well got shifted a couple feet. Oh, awesome. Versus. Dark is proposed, red is existing. <laughs> Do you have any problems with what's going on up there? None. So I will entertain a motion to issue the Certificate of Compliance for 283 Southwest Main Street. Make a motion. Go ahead. So, so moved. moved. Second. Do I hear a second? Oh, second. Second. Big Gary. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much for coming Aye. in. Sorry I did not find a plan. Thank yes. you very much. Did you have to move your back to the registry? Did you have to your property? Can I nail that to me? Do I got to come get it? No, you can nail it, but you might want to come, I'll come get it. Yeah. How long? Okay. Got some stuff to sign. We, sign it we have right. a lot of so things to sign. Okay. Just to let you know, I so we cannot leave. Yeah. Okay. Next, um, request for a certificate of compliance, Orbson Corp. 97 U Street. Are we talking about Alice Chase tonight or not? We're going to talk about everything tonight. <laughs> come on over. I've got your request. I've got your plan. So I went out today. Yes. But, you know, the grass. I'm just going to go in the grass to go a little bit more. So I got some photos here. Oh. Who does, Steve? The commission. Uh oh. Some, so the past commission said I'd like to see the grass grow more. I wanted the grass grow a little bit more, and they had an issue around the well. And when I went out there today, because the well is, you'll see it, it's got uh, wood chips. Let me back it up. Whoa. It's got a what? Yeah, let me go to today's photos. Huh. It's disappeared. Can I ask a question? Sure. So when you get a certificate of compliance and there was erosion control in place, mm -hmm. the certificate of compliance just means that he did the work as proposed on the plan. Can we issue that thing? Uh, let me back up. Let's say we issue him the uh, certificate of compliance. Can you just go out there and remove con erosion, or what happens to that stuff? Yes. He can do what he wants to do. Yeah. Because we're saying everything around there yes. established, it's now do what you want. stabilized, yes. The area is stable. Mm -hmm. There's no further work. So um, I think you had just sprayed it, right, when you That's came cool. in initially. So uh -huh. the one area that wasn't sprayed was wood chip. Yeah. yeah. Uh, went out there today, if all the heavy rain we had, there was yeah. no erosion. Yeah. You leaving the wood chips in place, or for good? How do you feel about the state of the grass right now? Is it? Oh no, it's it's, it's as good as you can expect for an August. You know. So it's not going to cause any erosion problems. No, that, that's the back end. That's within a, everything in the back is within a hundred foot off a 
and it came up good. This is some of this is in the front yard. Where was the well location? Can you see on there? Right here. The distance. Is that outside the hundred? The well? It's within the hundred. So I don't know if this is a dumb question or anything relevant. Right here, but right here. Okay. Somebody living in there now? Yes. Yeah. Is that typically? Is that, I guess that doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. So I think that the lawn has been established enough for um, our purposes. Uh, Steve, what, what's your opinion around the well? I think it's fine. I mean, because there was, there was no. I mean, it, you want to you want to stabilize the earth so it's not eroding into the resource area, and that's what's. It. So there's no erosion present. No, I mean it's grass or wood chips. It's, it wasn't eroding. Okay. Question. Yes. Do you yeah. ever go out and do a site walk for a um, whatever you're calling this thing now? Yes. You do. Yep. Why? Especially if we're going to say or? no, you're not getting it right now. So if now. you ever had a quit, oh, I guess. Yeah. You. If if like the last time the lawn I think was just sprayed when he came in in June right. and we it's, it wasn't established yet. So. And here was the first time it came. The what? This is, this yep. Oh, so you can see. Just been yeah, so is, there, is the certificate of compliance uh, request advertised to his neighbors? No. Ever? So it's just he did the work, he proved it. According to the plan, yeah. yeah, with the plan things. So the neighbors have their say the when it's permitted, not when it's cleaned up. Correct. What Question Mike? for Steve. Yes. Um, so to you, it looks like anything asked for in the order of conditions has been complied with, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Yes with the as bill and I think the commission was satisfied with the as bill last time that uh, Margaret did it was just a uh, the establishment of the lawn mm -hmm. and then I think I, I went out right before a storm because so my photo of the well looked a little spotty so they were kind of questioning why was there no lawn over there but it was mm -hmm. really wood chips okay 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 um so I'll entertain a motion to issue the certificate of compliance for 97 U Street so moved do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. We'll sign that tonight. Thank you. Tonight. Tonight. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. Want to do the violation? Come on over. Well, I want to Which call one? it that one. Potential. What why would you, you call it? Why would why you? Want come hey, what, yeah, what would you call it? You got so right. 260 <laughs> Southeast <laughs> Main Street. Our new member, Gary, Inquiry. saw some erosion occurring and some activity. Um, Who did? Um, Gary. Yeah, Gary's did. new. Okay. All right. So. Anthony Jenga, 260 Southeast Main Street. Um, what I had there was um, th there's a retaining wall that's up against the back side of my pool. Mm -hmm. There was some damage last winter to the whole section of fence and where the fence post is. Um, the wall was rotten and it pushed out the wall. I did like a temporary patch, but through the storms and everything, the water is just eroding under the, like it was eroding through the wall into my pool area. Mm -hmm. So I ended up taking the wall out to avoid having all that dirt washed into my pool. Um, I put the dirt all the way over to that right hand side that you can see, because the wood line is over here on the left. Um, that was originally um, just a fenced in area, kind of really weedy and stuff. Where'd that uh, dirt come from? Excuse me. Right, right in front of the wall. That, all that dirt that was right there is from that. Right, so it was a little high. You took it out. Yeah, just out. so I could put my tie backs in and everything like that. Um, I started this project. I tried to do it myself, just honestly because of uh, the cost factor. So um, it's just been a, a slow process. I'm actually almost done. I just have to do one more course uh, on the pool side and then just bring the wall back to where it was originally and then put my fence back up. So, so that's why it's a mess. Right? When was the pool installed? Uh, 2002, I think. It wasn't when I owned it. So here's this, the, the pool got a permit, here's a certificate of compliance. Oh, the, uh, doesn't look like that now. From the previous <laughs> owner. Yeah. Um, this is 2002? So I didn't see that riprap anywhere. <laughs> uh, On the roadside. Okay, so Gary, this is the original filing for the house. So I'm not sure when the, I'm, my guess is the pool was installed in 2002. It was not. March 5th, 2003. Did Heritage do it? 2003. Yeah. I, I didn't own the house oh. when they bought it. I, so I bought the house two years ago. I with the pool? Yes, with the pool. Looks like a lot of the erosion was from, and I, I don't know if you plan on putting these 
ties here, but I, you know. You no, know, those are, honestly, those were put there to try to avoid having the water, try to divert the water away. Uh, right, because it looked like a lot of this erosion occurred from the street. Yes, it was from the street. Run off from the street and not from this property. Right. And, and I was going to tell you, just, you know, they're going to put the, not to build it here because you're probably in a <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Those, that, yeah, so that what happened was, happen was that, that, what was happening on the water was coming straight from this angle. The water was coming straight down the road right. and going right over the wall into the pool right. with all the heavy rains we had. So to avoid that during the construction, I just put the wood there with some dirt. That is going to be all gone. That it will be all eventually grass. It, it looks like a lot of the erosion came from the street, and then also when it got into the re, into the over the embankment, it looks because of the sand and gravel it dissipated so fast that it didn't look like the sand traveled. Because yeah, it's all sand right there. Because it had any vegetation, you might have gone maybe less than three feet. And this is and then, the and then trouble area. Probably, probably the There's first flush, it carried the sand, yeah. and after that, it was probably clean. When was the Yasbil? Yeah. Well, this is it. The Yasbil sand was like many, many Case years ago. Right? Okay, so the house was installed. This is the plan for the house. Right. And they pulled the permit for the pool. Which is shown on this plan. But we, we've it never found those other conditions, though, right? It was, it was um, in order of conditions. You issued a COC. I didn't. Uh, yeah, I didn't look it up. You familiar with this? Yeah. No, it's oh. before my time. I was okay. in college or. Not well, well, we have to take it one step at a time. So, 2006, the COC was issued. I'm trying to tell you that, um, yeah, okay, so Steve signed off, and then he also signed off on the pool install. Okay. When was the last time equipment was on that site? For equipment for what? To move the dirt from the pool. Oh. The old, at the very beginning, May, and it was just a, it was just okay. a scrape to, to pull the pieces of wall out, load and them in a dump truck. Work? But my brother a lot did. What kind of machine? The Bobcat. Okay. So, Steve, you saw the erosion coming out of there. You saw the dug up soils in front of the pool. Are uh, you okay with what's going on there, or you feel like. Uh, no, I, I mean, I think he probably, if he's doing, well, I don't know what his activity is. I mean, the, I would. Maybe, if you Me plan, personally? Yeah. <laughs> if it's up to my wife, it would have been done a month ago. No, but you plan on doing, doing walls? Or oh, no. So, what? I, it's hard for me. It's so, so, if you pull the picture back up, I can show you. You can. From looking from the. So, do you want me to walk over there? Is yeah, you okay? can also point it out on the plan here. Um, there, yeah, the pool is I, yeah. shown so on that plan. It's actually easier because it's yeah, just the wall. I'm, okay. So, if I could show Are you. Are those the pictures I sent you or you took them? So, this. This is. this. All of this was existing. The fence came back. So all I did was just take it down so I could work in there. This is a, the walkway that you saw before that was, that had, a, obviously it's overgrown now, but this is all behind the fence. You're saying there's a walkway underneath that dirt? No. Oh, behind the fence. This was a, a, like an earth walkway. There's a, there's a door right here. There's pathway. No, yeah, it's a pathway. It's a path. So the wall comes out, this retaining wall comes out, I think it was eight feet if I measured, and that's it. It just tapers down into the ground. That's mm -hmm. all I have to do is finish that. Right where, there. where you just had your finger, Yep. From there, left, what do you propose to do with that mess? With here? Yeah. I'm going to clean it up and put it back over here and probably put crushed stone How? right there. With what? Yeah. How am I going to do it? Yep. Um, it's not that deep. It's probably even with the grade of the road, so I might not have to do anything to it. It's going to be stabilized, would you, would you say, or no? Could point out the 100 on there? Stabilized as far <laughs> as what? <laughs> growth, you know. Yes. Some well, there's a lot of vegetation here, along the... Here. You can't see it because it's covered... Right here is covered with some sand and stuff, but this is all... So thick vegetation the right there. So you're this saying this that the sand came yeah, over and covered over the vegetation? That is that what you're yeah. saying? That's, that's what so my right assumption is. Yes. It's, it's normally I mow that area. So, so it's within the hundred of something. It's entirely within the hundred of something. Okay. I got to tell you, um, this is a mess, and I'm going to request a site visit. Sure. I'm home tomorrow. Come on. Up. I would recommend. Well, it's not that easy, but. I would, I would I recommend you put erosion controls down gradient and file an RDA at the minimum. Yeah, so there were erosion controls in both previous renditions of this project in the same location, actually. Uh, I'm going to request a site visit. I mean, I'm not even sure if I'm doing this procedurally right. Request to have a site visit with at least one other member or with myself and Steve. Okay. Or both. So, would you consider this as a repair of that stone retaining wall? Oh, yeah. That was originally? It's a repair of it. It fell apart. 
it was all so rotten. So that stone retaining well on the side is, is part not, of the line of construction. It's not stone. It could have been it's very wood. high, though. Right it's wood, there, no, it's only three that feet. one, and then this is the original. And it was right three, of, three <laughs> to four feet. So if, you'll, if you're standing in my pool area, it's in my pool area. The wall is in my pool area. Okay. It was coming, the, it was eroding into, like it was, it was breaking into in my area. pool area, so I removed it. But in order okay. to remove I the wall, I had to get the dirt out the behind the wall, because it doesn't behind. just come out. But I, I, whatever you want, I mean, I to be honest, I didn't, I was just fixing it. Whatever you want me okay. to do, I'll, okay. I'm easy. All right. Make a suggestion? What is your suggestion? Well, when I saw this, I was very upset, because I've gone by there many, many times. I know what a violation looks like if I... If it bit me in the face, and this is a violation, I'm not saying Mr. Jenga, you know, uh, did it on purpose. He certainly didn't, because I've been up there where all that sheet flow comes off and crowns off to his side. But this is not something that should wait a week or two. I think uh, immediately these straw wattle things should be put in place so that nothing else goes down there, and that we should arrange a site walk um, as soon as possible, and then decide together whether he deserves a violation or not because I was very upset that I thought it was the guy building the pool, but, you know, you look at the, the books and it shows it's been built really for quite some time. I couldn't see it because the fence was up, so it looks new because the fence was gone. But that work that he's sa suggesting, mm -hmm. you're not going to scrape that sand back by hand, mm -hmm. and unless you're a really good bobcat operator, you're not going to do it cleanly. So he has every right to do it himself, and it's not fair for me to beat up on him without you guys seeing it. So I'm requesting a site visit. Okay. So let's first um, erosion control to be staked. Um, where are you able to stake that? Where is your where limit? Are you, of are you familiar with that? No, I'm, not, I'm honestly not familiar with any of this. So this is all new to me. What? Yeah, straw models. We can have Steve talk with you, send you a contact to get them. You're not going to probably need too much. It's just. So do you? So like, are barrier. you saying like where, um, right, like right where that walk area walkway was that well, I showed try you? Try to leave yourself some room. Yeah, to I'll have enough room to work. So if I do it right along the wood line, just I to go there and show him. Or Steve. Okay, so we're just outside. coming up with a game. That's yeah. fine. He yeah. can. Could I ask Steve where locally could a homeowner buy those things? A terrace in Auburn. Okay. So, so you're talking about like silk fence with some hay bales? Nope. Oh, okay. it, it's a it's a tube that's filled with straw, right? They're 25 foot length. And it's okay. in rolls, and you roll it out, and you put it down there, sort of rests, whatever's coming downhill. All right. You may have to do that twice so that you intercept it. Sure. It hits one thing. Nor normally you wouldn't do this, but because you've got a problem with eroding that road, mm. you hit it once, you go downstream and hit it again. Okay. You just sort of arrest what's happening. Steve or I or the board comes out there give your suggestion, and then we act on it again and put it on for the next hearing, maybe. Okay. okay. And in the, in, can I ask a question? Yes. In the meantime, if I'm able to finish what I have to do and have it backfilled? No way. That's my opinion, not to, without at least a site visit, Tracy. Well, wouldn't it make more sense to finish it and solve the problem so it doesn't erode again okay. versus? So we're going to get the erosion control up. If you have a suggestion, if you need to know where it's going, mm -hmm. or if you want to just buy it and then Steve, can show you at the <coughs> site walk. That's fine. Um, and then Steve has suggested to file for a request for determination. Okay. okay? What does for that mean? the work within the hundred foot buffer. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so there's a, it's a pretty straightforward um, process. Okay. You would you can even take this plan that right, shows yeah, the, where you. the pool is. Okay. And you're going to list what activities you're going to be doing within the one hundred. Okay. See the reason is your existing permit. Expi uh, uh, ran out, you got a certificate of compliance saying that work was not n fine, now you're doing fresh work with an uh, buffer, okay. and it's causing a problem. Okay. You have every right to do this work yourself, sure. but let, I've instructed constructed this stuff. Let me give you a pointer, let Steve tell you an idea, but I'm against any kind of work without... I mean, the pool, wasn't, the pool wasn't under the original permit, and Steve actually signed off on the pool permit within the 100, so... It was it was passed, so it was in within an existing lawn area, but it was still within the hundred on. Yeah, he's not just doing the initial, not on the wetland that you're concerned about, the one that's across the street within that sure. one hundred. There's there's oh, all right. there's one across the street from us. Yes. Oh. and you're okay. within that wetland. Oh, I but didn't realize at least it was it's one there. How would I, I mean, how would I know? It's at least it's upgrade from you. Yeah, and your water's not going to run uphill. So, so. Sure. so where's the wetland down here? So this is the wetland. 
Okay. If you follow this 100 foot buffer here, yeah, here and here, it, it all the work is outside the buffer. So uh, it's what, very hard. This buffer? Yeah. So there's one here. Then there's and another one here. that's coming this way. That's curling around. That's he's catching it. Can I show you something? But for see some reason, the pool was. See this right here? Yes. You're saying that's not identified it as a wetland? No. This is the buffer which was flagged. Okay. This is the buffer for that wetland, and this then is this the is the buffer for this wetland. These are the flags. The He's inside flag of this one. This one, yeah. So the guy then across it, the street. In fairness to everybody, yes. I'd love Steve's opinion as to whether I misread this because if I did, then I'll apologize and be called on it. But I see that as a wetland because there's hydric soils there. It looks. You did some augering. It's apparent that they're hydric. I mean, well, they, unless it's determined on a, on a. On a map, isn't that just your opinion? Well, typically like you have soils and vegetation. Yeah, that's yeah right. like that oh, that area right there. So Are you talking about what's to the left? Yeah. Yeah. So that area is, as far as when I've been down there, is like dead, like long, like it's like grass and and mulch and like not mulch, but um, like old leaves and stuff like that. Like that's in that area. It's yeah. just vegetation. Did you put the leaves there? I didn't know. I have another okay. dumping area on the other side. I'd okay. like just Steve's input on that. Yeah. Well, well, okay. So, for the sake of argument, I would I would put the erosion controls. Sure, I, whatever you want, I'll do. I don't care. The it's RDA, fine. Yes. And then everyone's covered. Yes. And then, uh -huh. um, in fact, over semantics. And then, I, you know, and then we can do that tomorrow. Okay. Because the triple path is the advertising. You can argue about the plan and that. Yeah. But you have to go to Maria tomorrow. The town hall's open until 6, get the paperwork. So, you so for an RDA tomorrow at Maria? At the building department. You would just tell you, need, I, I, I relocate it. You want to place the ad. Okay. Give you a time and a date. Place the ad. It takes four days, five days to place the ad. The ad has to be in five days before this meeting. Okay. August twenty. To comply with the regulations. Okay. How much does so that cost? That, the just place the ad. Get that in the paper. You bring that to here. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, we can talk about your plan and sure. Yeah. Stuff. And it's just a few bucks for the ad. And is there a filing fee for the RDA? Five bucks. Okay. Cool. All right. So when board would you like and to schedule a site walk? Anything else you want to do? Like you know, I'm th that's it. I just want to fix my wall and put my fence back up and be done with it, to be honest with you. Now, if I have a question, can I, if I want to, because the whole entire fence eventually needs to be replaced. I would add that to your RDA. I just add it. And then if I say I don't have the money to do it this year, but I want to do it next RDA summer. RDA is good for perpetuity. Okay. Forever, yeah. All right. So I, as long as we have a plan, we're cool. Right. Okay. okay. Like All right. Um, <laughs> and um, when is it convenient for you to have a site walk? You don't necessarily need to be there. You just need. We'll we let want? you know. I'd like to be there so you can tell me recommendations so, so we can be um, on the same page. Um, board, I'm home. I mean, I don't know if it's uh, okay tomorrow or Wednesday or. Board, do we have any time? Today is Monday. Yeah, I can go any time. When are you available? I'm usually free after 8 p.m. Huh. Okay. Oh, that'll good. Be good. Okay. Tomorrow, tomorrow Steve, or Wednesday. Do you care if you do this or not? Tomorrow, or tomorrow what time? We'll try uh, either if you care. Okay, you want to do um, tomorrow 5.30? Sure. Sure, sure. Tomorrow 5.30? Okay. Yeah, 5 that's fine. Thank you. You can Steve go at your leisure. You I'll go yeah. at my leisure, please. Mm -hmm. Just Steve take it. Yep. Yeah. Mike, you going or? No. That's Steve's job. I work in New London for that mm -hmm. I heard. Okay. I'll swap some stories of... London, Waterford. And Alrighty, Waterford thank you very much. You're for very coming welcome. In. Thank you guys. Yeah. I Thanks for coming in. So yeah. just file the RDA tomorrow. Come in and see Maria, and she'll yeah. take care of it. Advertising is the. Okay. So just curious, how did you finally um, get notified that there was something going on? The guy from Heritage Pools called me and said, "Hey." Yeah, he did me a favor. He did us both a favor. Okay, let's Thanks. take this gentleman. All right, Sorry. thank you guys. I know we want you want to stay. No. All oh night yeah. On. I'm, I'm gonna like sleep under the table. Hi. What are you here for? Uh, my name is Jason Alexander from 227 Southwest Main Street. Yes. Um, I've been trying to get in contact with just anybody. Okay. Um, nobody's returning my phone calls at all. Okay. So uh, we just purchased the house back in January. We've done a lot of renovations. Uh -huh. uh, we're trying to add a second means of egress okay. on the second floor. Uh -huh. That would involve putting um, like a six foot deck on the outside of the house with some stairs. Okay. Um, it's already gone through uh, the building inspector, the permit and everything. Uh, the building inspector told my contractor that the permit was all set. <coughs> everything's good to go. Um, so, you know, they bought all the materials and everything. And then we get a knock on the door saying, hey, you know, you need to go to the conservation commission in order to get this approved and signed and everything like that. Who knocked on the door? We didn't get a name. Is this bad luck Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 because I signed off on a permit, right. So they, that this came in front of the commission. We were supposed to come to the last meeting, but it was canceled. Um, did you ever file? My contractor supposedly yeah, did. Yeah, I don't think he ever did. Yes. yes um, I don't have you on my agenda. Well, like I said, I haven't been able to get in touch with anybody. Okay. Maria in the office? No. Or I've left no. messages. I've well, left my what number. What was the question you had that you wanted answered? We just need the permit signed, pretty yeah. much. I mean, as far as, as, far as my so understanding. So what's the, what's the distance from what's the pond? Address? 227 Southwest Main Street. So you've got a, de a proposed deck, not actually it's just a some means of egress. House. Yeah. Second, so the deck that they're putting on the side of the house is within... It's like maybe 30 feet or so. Of a pond. Okay, yeah. So you've, you've got to file your request for determination at the right. least. Um, so if you get the advertisement in tomorrow, you could be on our next meeting August 20th and um, kind of go through the same process. Okay, so are you being held back from this? See Maria. Yeah. Go see Maria tomorrow. She'll tell you what to do and point you in the right direction. So we've got right. nothing from them, right? Well, yeah. Well, I want to sign off on the building permit, and I noticed that they didn't file anything They're within the jurisdiction of the commission. They were, the structure's going up 30 feet from the pond. Okay, so, so you we did. We notified them months ago. Right. We've been Address trying to again? get this. Right 227 up. Southwest Main Street. So oh, for what pond? Bad, Bad luck. luck. We've been trying to get this straightened out, like you said, for months. Yeah. But no one, I, I haven't been, no phone calls. No, no phone you have an calls, engineer? No I haven't got an engineer. engineer. So if you want to come in, we're open late tomorrow. Or yeah, that would be your best bet to put it to bed because um, I don't have any pieces of paper. Yeah, yeah, you know, if you're just doing sonic tubes, it's the structure itself. The commission might be able to look at it, giving you circumstances. Um, mm -hmm. But it's just, I can't sign it because technically it's within the, you know, mm -hmm. you have to file. Why There's not wing up there tomorrow on a site visit? Well, they should file first. Oh. Who's your, are you using an engineer? We have our general contractor. So he's basically saying you're doing some work that triggered an application process and you've got to do that. Unfortunately, the way government businesses, some people are here, sometimes they're not. And okay. we don't have the authority to read. So you've got to file. Um, Okay, okay, so come in what tomorrow. Time you tomorrow? Mm -hmm. What time? Tomorrow. They're about? open till seven. Yeah. Just talk to Maria. They're open till or six. 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 I, can I think my the card. I can talk to you in the weekend or at night. Yeah, that's fine. I'm, I'm working. Card. I'm working late tomorrow night. But I might be able to come in in the morning. I'll give you my yeah. card. You can call me anytime. Leave a message. Yeah, that would work. I would really stuff appreciate that. Okay. Long. All right, we've got to get moving on because we yes. have a lot of stuff. But right. Steve's your man. Thanks, hi. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um. So we have a couple. Um, Rights of first refusal, so pretty much we need to weigh in on if we would want to purchase the land or if we are going to waive our right of first refusal. And does conservation mm -hmm. have final say? No, the selectmen. So we're just and one of many? Yes, You're all the boards, boards need to. In fact, to I also, I already got the opportunity to do this once as part of open space. <laughs> yeah, okay. every single board. On the open space, board? so. No, uh, I know what open space is. So you've gone Good. through this process? On the open space committee. Of accepting or denying. Uh, we voted to not recommend the property be purchased yeah. by the town to the Board of Selectmen. Do we have to explain why? Exercise our rights of first refusal. No, we do not. Okay, so let's... Um, we, so typically you would be able to have the option to purchase the land for the same amount that the person has it under much agreement. Is it? I am looking for Very it Very expensive. Right well, right now. We can't afford it. Uh, well, hey there. Right. Let's... Um, I just like a little information. No, absolutely. Okay. Um, I think they were both six digits. Six digits, one like a hundred thousand or something. Over a hundred thousand. For just a, like a two, what uh, is it's it? It's a two and three eighths and a six and three quarter. Or so the family of Alice Chase wants quarter. to sell the land. The town has rights because she was in some kind of program. Yep. It's a okay. sixty-one A. Let's just make a motion. Okay. You don't want to know now how much it is. Because in the future okay. you would want to know if it's cheap. Yes. Well, <laughs> right. Exactly. Good point. I drove up there. It's like, it's. I think it's the officially last dirt road in Douglas. Uh, no. Orange There's Street. a couple more. Yeah. Um, so one, the uh, six point two four is for ninety thousand. Oh, we'll see. Well, How much frontage does it describe the land? Uh, There's no. a we don't have enough time for that. Tracy, and it geez. has frontage. The two point eight. Yeah, what if it's got frontage for four house lots? It's got frontage for one house lot. 
and it no longer meets the minimum requirement of 10 acres for 61A of the nature. Or 61, yeah, 61 acres. And why is that significant? They cannot stay in the program anymore, anyway. Because the program changed? The program requires 10 acres of continuous space. And it used to be something different? Nope, it's always been 10 acres. And They're selling out these chunks from a larger piece. So it's not an issue then, right? Let's move. Can we, uh, do we need a vote? Yes. We need a motion? As, yeah, as Katie Gray said stated before same same we made motion a so for both yeah. shall i yeah go yeah. for it i make a motion for both of these mm -hmm. that we recommend to the town of selectmen not to purchase these plots of land second okay motion by main second all those in favor aye, aye. Okay. if we Thank had to give a reason we would say they do not provide any crucial environmental space that mm -hmm. abuts this forest or another. So really, they just want a yes or no, and then the selectmen will make the decision. Correct. Right. Every single town board, though, has to say no. Oh, but what I mean is, yeah. we we not necessarily going to say, hey, it's got great wetlands there, keep it. Or do we weigh yeah. in? Yes, we do. Yeah, we have. But this is just very nondescript piece yeah. of land. I think yes. the only part of it. Yeah. Steve, do we have to it do all of these the items? The larger piece um, is being kept. Yeah. The New England Realty Ventures. Aquifer well, protection. I couldn't find anything on those. Yeah, we've got a huge yeah, boulder right here. <laughs> so can, are they coming on for the next hearing? Do well, you have usually, your calendar? If usually, you're gonna, it, your comment would be if, if they're within the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission, they should file. I mean, yeah. Okay, so they are filing for okay. the aquifer, right? And they are um, within the hundred of the so area across the way. So they're going to have to file with the yeah. commission. Yeah. So okay. tonight's a non-issue because they have to come back. Yes. So. Well, they have to go in front. And they're going to tear down that phone pole. We'll it. talk about yeah, that. Where later. are we talking That's about anyway? Okay. Primary so yes, take care across of that. the way. And what they want to move that to a Dunkin' Donuts or some crazy thing or? Correct. Okay. They are in front of the board, so I believe. Steve, you didn't get a chance to look at anything? I, 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 I couldn't find them. Where, where were they? Where right on top. Them? She must have put them. Does it matter, though, if we're just addressing that a second time or not? Um, you know, really what do you mean? Do they Are they on the agenda for the 20th, August 20th? No. Nope. So if they're not so coming they're before us next, what are we discussing right now? Do they have to do other um, wetland issues with them? So our when feedback. When you go, when you, when a board, when someone, plan, can get feedback. when someone files a special permit with the planning board, all the other boards have a certain time frame to, to give comments to the planning board. So that's what the planning board's asking for the commission's comments. But I haven't seen the plan yet, and it's on an aquifer that the conservation as um, guardians of. Uh, what no, I think no. that's planning board. That's so what am I missing? So here's the So we don't have jurisdiction because it's underground? <laughs> That's the way the bylaws were in. Uh, but I thought there was probably. activity. So this is just yeah. another thing like Alice Chase where they just want to know if we have anything real big problem. There's no wetlands up there. So if what everybody are we yeah. wants to yeah. well yeah, there so there's one directly across the street and it also um it is shown on here, the hundred foot Boarding vegetative wetland. What, what okay. What's that property? Uh, Seventy-four. Main. Mm-hmm. So this application. Which is where? Yeah, I want to see where that was. Oh, go is. for it. Right yeah. in the Other corner where the detention basin is. The application before the boards, just for the aquifer issue. They'll come back to us a second time for the wetlands issues. Is that right, Steve? No. Well, they have no. their dog. <laughs> well, unless there, unless there's a, there is, there so might not be any wetlands. This is the so there is a. Yeah, um, because they've been filled in. This they is Main Street. They can still sit. Oh, okay. You know it. <laughs> okay. Back to uh, the, the corner of the project as well as the detention basin is nicking the 100 from across the street. Nothing is. The comment could be they, they should file with the commission. If they were they need, wait, uh, I crazy? would wait suggest to file something. So the fire department is over on that side. Okay. I this is the corner of Rydell and Main. Rydell. Somebody's trying to put something in there? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's not going to stay like that forever. So Steve's got it up oh, on the screen. Do you have a full-blown site plan? I mean, that's... Uh, no, I mean, at some point? Or are we just at a very beginning of the... If you're outside the jurisdiction of the commission, the commission, they might never come in front of the commission. 
But is it, has the planning board been hit with a full blown site plan review? Uh, yeah, yes. That's why asking yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's going on? Both we Mike and I are on well, the planning board. So the path, these sorts of things on. Where is it, Nick? Can you so right that? here, this hundred foot BBW. What's this? That is a detention basin. We don't have jurisdiction on a created detention well, basin. Is there a riverfront area in that plan? No. no. There you go. Well, it's riverfront. Okay, so we're just going to say that they need to file. Right, it should be River, right? That's Seminole Brook. I that is not. It's a good catch. Not um, shown He's dead on. right. Wait, I'm looking at it. See the dark blue line? Oh no, that line. No, because Centerville. Put uh, put your finger on the screen. The first There's blue line you see. Right here. Yeah, I was going to say Centerville's across the street. No. Oh yeah. Well, wow, 20 feet. But it, it ends as a perennial stream. Yeah. The, the Right. Yeah, jurisdiction because it's only 200 feet of get out of there. Plans to show the riverfront of Senator Brooke. Make sure they're not, you know, help. So, do well, you want to say we need more information to determine that, or no? That I want to say that file. they have to file. Okay. They're absolutely within 200 feet of that property. So we'll find out here. Hang on. Well, not 20. They're close. 20 feet is. They're close. The very, the very minimum a request for determination. The maximum is to have the, those wetlands flagged it does it kick in when they're within let me back up wetlands protection act says if you're within 150 feet or that's what it used to be you have to flag wetlands to make sure that your activity is outside the hundred does it kick in at 250 or am i misreading that no this is just they should prove to the commission they're outside our jurisdiction yeah through an rda or notice of intent well just from the plans so we can't so comment on the riverfront and the BBW on the plans of the adjacent wetlands. So really, we shouldn't comment until we see that, right? Well, I can comment saying you need to make sure that this. I mean, we're already activity is within the hundred. Sorry. I suggest that we postpone <laughs> acting on this until we see well, a plan. You, need, you, need, you, need, you, need. you gotta make sure that you have to act in a certain amount of time if the board doesn't act within a certain amount of time period it's deemed that they're not so going to so there is, there do there is proposed activity within the 100 foot that they have marked on the plan that they provided to us let's do the thing where they have to come in for rda the minimum yeah mm -hmm. we just leave it to them if they want to do an rda versus the noi do you have a better they need to file they need to file a better drawing than this no <laughs> so how do you know whether, whether it's right within? there on yeah, but they didn't cover the across the street, here. though, Tracy. I know, but this is the corner. I mean, yeah, they didn't cover that way. So this is pointed out, 100 foot boring vegetated. I didn't see that. Wetland every setback. Every, setback. every plan known to man shows right 200 here. foot. This is a street down here. The 200 foot buffer. That yeah. is a street. It's yeah. across the street. So there is a what? street in between yeah. it, but still. Yeah, let's do I agree with everyone else. Yeah. Well, then so let's do the idea. Move on. Okay. Um, I don't have that sheet, the comment sheet. Oh. <laughs> so just to let you know, uh, remind me. Okay, and then we have another review comment for Earth Removal Special Permit. Did you make a decision legally about RDA or, or no? Um, I think it's just a you feedback that, comment. You know, we don't have to file that. No. What? Well, we don't give them an approval. No, but you shouldn't dictate on what people file. What? Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You don't dictate if they're going to file RDA or NOI. You just tell them that they should file. They yes. should, they oh, should okay. do either, though. Yes. We're, we're suggesting that? One or the other. Gotcha. Because what happens is when, you, when I tell people they should file an RDA and you guys say go <laughs> file an NOI. Okay. Hey, I'm not hungry. I didn't they're bring my sleeping bag. <laughs> so let's take a look at the Kinda earth smart. removal. I guarantee I already don't like it. Oh, man. Is that the going? Yeah. <laughs> is that the cistern on top of the hill? I don't know. Is that it's eleven point so. seven nine acres. Is that across from the uh, McDonald's? I mean the uh, Shell gas station. Oh, yeah. Can I just give you a yeah. quick overview of what I I talked to Andy Leonard today. He's in um, relationship with Jim Pine, whether they're gonna buy that or not buy it, whatever, of Pine Scenic Gravel. His take on it was that this is just another thing that the board has to comment on, and he's saying all activity is outside of a jurisdiction, so we either have to disprove that or. Yeah. Well, the riverfront area, the, the stream that's uh, um, between the Bedoin, this property with the cistern in Guilford of Maine, is a perennial stream. 
Could you pull that up, please? So is there a 200 foot rear front area shown on the plan anywhere? Because I cannot see it from here. The wall broke. I don't. It's going to be at the top uh, there. Gotcha. Hey, did we used to do a, a rule that plans should come in color coded or not? No, no, no. When they're getting presented, not necessarily for this review. I don't see anything that would be a. Where is the town line on this map? Um, it's going to be uh, right here. Right here, right on the street. <laughs> so, you can see down there where Old Lackey Dam Road is? Yep. Where's right across the way from that. Steve, do you have this plan that you could put on the screen and show us where the 200 foot is or not? Um, no, but there, see here, this is where they're working. This is all wacky, that's across from yonder. There's and then there's the existing. There's a stream right, right through here. Okay, so it's flagged as a BVW, I believe. Can you use them, keep moving the mouse along that stream? Where's the gas station here? And locate it, thank you. Across the street? Yes, it's right here. And actually, this is the yeah. driveway. Gas the stations gas over station. there. Where's the house that they operate their office and scale out of? It's up here, on that. It's over here. Yeah. Scale. The, the this is the whole the major hall, thing, right. close to the gas station. That whole big hill. They cut this out already, right? Yeah. This yes. They excavated this. Yeah. You want to keep going. Where's that water thing that you talk about? That big thing that's up on the hill. Is that right here? This is right here. Yeah. Could you um? Correlated to how it shows up on this plan, though, Steve. Or see where the um, right disturbed here. area is. So this. What is do they do with that? The they dirt. take it down. No. Well, it's for fire know. suppression. What? For the fire suppression. This is the for stream the here. Are they proposing to take it down? Okay. That's what it does it say Not anything? See you right here. So this is the end of the stream, right here. Oh, because this is wetlands. Yeah. So this, this is a tiny little shrub. It's a little perennial stream. It's perennial. But they're not Why identifying it as perennial. They have a uh, oh, there's the 100. There's 200 Where's the 200? If right here, 200 foot repairing, repairing. Oh, it says front. 200. Mm -hmm. What's okay. that line though? That's right the here. That's the river front. So then this is their edge of construction. Raise oh, main this is right, their so this is their plan. Maintain a raised berm around perimeter disturbed area, slope to drain into removal area for groundwater recharge, create temporary low areas where it proceeds across the site. So they are developing a, a whole a plan in here. Here's what I'm to concerned with. Is that yeah. the 200? Yes. Yeah, That's like the worst line I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, so we found it. It's outside of our jurisdiction as well as from across the street too. Well, the wetland across the street. Assuming they're doing those things that they're planning to do on the side. Yes. Okay. You agree with that? Yeah. It's outside of us. Yeah. So let's move. On. Yeah. Do I make a motion or no? This no, we need to sign stuff. That's a repairing 200. And so that's what they're saying. Sign this vouchers, this order line. conditions, so that we have compliance. I just saw that. Okay. okay. What do you have here? So yeah. you've already handled that? Oh, no. Uh, all of us need to sign it. When? Right now. Does somebody and sign what? verify these and types of things with all these? Yes. No, um, we're going to. This one is no comment. Is, is there a board or somebody who goes back to these things with their kids? I'm only nervous because that dirt pit that dug up the cemetery on us last time. Well, the, the planning board has been... Long time ago. The planning board has verification over the... They do that? Plans. Okay. Well, I don't... Yeah, they, well, until they're closed out. Okay. Where is this? I ended up doing a whole study on cemeteries in Douglas, and I found all of the cemeteries in Douglas. There are at least 24 of them, because at one point somebody excavated underneath one and started falling down on them because they didn't see it on their planning map. And how do you find that out? Well, it was supposed to be on the map, but it wasn't on the map, so I went and found it. Oh, I got some books. Where? Where was the disturbance? The bodies came out of the ground? This is on a, a, a gravel pit off South Street. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a family of the steels. Pass across the parker. So I'm going to start sending around the items that we have voted positively on mm -hmm. tonight. Steve, um, you're going to keep track of the items that need the special conditions yeah, added to I them? Yeah, them written down. Okay. You have everything written down? So this one was the Certificate of Compliance. Sign where? Um, on the sign here. Tracy. You know what? i got to admit, in front of everybody, you I'm really glad that I didn't take the chairman's job because you're good at this. Oh, thank you very much. Um, yes. So on the sign here. Dated? Any line. That little blue. <laughs> That little yellow stickers. Hey, blue. I do have some questions <laughs> that we should answer before we go so that we don't have any. Okay, is it signed, Andy? Real quick. No, no, just sign. We will date it. Okay. 
Um, so that was for the certificate of compliance. This is our voucher for the MACC dues. So it's going to be four of us. Um, the total is four hundred one dollars. So there's going to be uh, some workshops. Just sign it. Yes, please. Workshops? Do we have to go to workshops? Yes, okay. you especially. I quit. Have to go. I quit right now. If I have to go to workshop, I'm not kidding. I okay. make that vow in front of everyone. I'm going to have schedule conflicts every time. <laughs> okay, so it's on a Saturday, so you should have the day off. I'm not going to any dang um, workshops. This is lot number two for Hayward. For sign where? Homes. Oh, where it says sign here. Correct. Wow. You'll, you'll get used to it. I'm just curious. Same. Do you put this here or somebody else Maria. She's are good, too. And hey, Steve. Just as long as we don't lose anything while this is passing around. I, I wanna, this is lot number three. I want to vote that Steve gets my extra hours in because I couldn't find them all day. Okay. I'm so upset. Let's just focus on signing first. <coughs> um, here is the Manchog Pond treatment. Wait. You You're not passing me something that makes me pay your mortgage off or uh, anything like that, Aaron. Do you no, sign these things, too? I don't need to worry too? about that. Do you sign these also? Yes. I did, I believe I did this one. You, I have a lot of letters in my name. Well. I used to have more. Really? Yep. There's a story there, but we don't have time I for it. I got married. Pretty <laughs> <laughs> straightforward. Hold on, hold on. Okay. This is the Pierce Cove Road deck. Dock. I mean, would you like the wisdom I of that say, I don't remember that. <laughs> yes, we permitted a dock. Uh, what was that, like three also? days ago? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> how'd you like yeah. the wisdom of that decision? That came out pretty good. Yeah. Yes. At least they're not going to strangle each other. Good job, yes. Yes. Okay, this one is the 117 Harry Street Certificate hey, of Compliance I with the lawn. Deal, by the way. Pre yeah. Shh. Is that illegal? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. And this is 65 Bigelow Road. I already don't remember that one. 65 is from the previous meeting. Richard here. Bigelow Road. Yeah. Yeah, new house. Septic. Um, nobody signed it. Probably ready now. Uh, we need to vote on it. I don't think it was on my agenda. Hold on. You voted on it last time. Maria just didn't have it ready. I don't believe any of us actually voted on no, it. No, but you might have voted at the last meeting, the last conservation committee. None of us were here. But we aren't those people. What's that? We, I don't know anything about it. We weren't here, and it wasn't on my agenda. Oh, you weren't here like the last meeting? So I just need verification okay. that it was voted on. Okay. Um, the signers don't actually have to be the people that voted. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go hunting for them again. Okay. And that was going to be on hold. This guy, I think we already signed. Both of these we signed. I mean, I'm fading fast. Odd Debt Builders. Okay. All right. So. If we don't have anything else, Steve, do you have anything else? I don't. Do we have to review the previous minutes? Do we have a finance um, report? Let's, do we have let's, wait, adjourn? let's wait no, 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 until Mike, the next you meeting yes. for the minutes. And um, in your packet, there was the new oh. members' contact information, yeah, as nice. well as the, the town hall. Fabulous. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. No way. I have a couple of questions. I'm serious. Oh, you, you want to I'll make it really quick, okay, but they have to be it. answered so I do my job right. Okay. All right. The, the fines that people pay, where does it go? Steve? It's made up to the town of Douglas. And the town gets it, or the state gets part of it? No, well, the town gets it. Into conservation fund or it doesn't have general fund? It doesn't have general. Okay. Uh, are we going to talk about it at some point when we have. I uh, forget that. We'll do it next time. Yeah. Uh, can I get your phone number, or you prefer the board doesn't have it, and just go through email? E email is probably the best, or you leave a message. If it's, but usually I check it. I'm here. I'm here so night. leave a message on the your your mailbox here, yeah. and you check in on that. Today. So if there's an emergency, 
Just leave a message there and you check in. Yeah, or, or if it's really a message. Can I just have you guys sign one more? Gotta get the hell out. Seconded. Easy, this Mike. One. Hey, we got a second. Too. Last one. Is there such a thing as telling someone where you think there's a violation as a commission member by themselves saying, hey, what you're doing is messed up. I'm issuing you a verbal cease and desist. Um, Steve can speak to viol potential violations. Yeah, I mean, it is a process for doing that. I mean, just to, you know, after doing this for 18 years, it's, and I know that town inside and out. In the history of um, what they're doing. The same one we signed, but there's two copies, so I'm just going to give her both copies. Okay. You don't want to, just you don't in case, but that's one is the two people, certificates so of best, compliance. If you want to just let okay, me know, I love, I go back to the phone call thing, drop the phone call. I'll look it up, I'll follow up. Got it. You don't want to be trespassing. Sometimes you can't get to it. You don't want to put yourself in a compromising position. I have another question. Is the town ever in violation of conservation laws? Because it certainly looks like. <laughs> okay. There's a process there for a that process too. For that? There is a process, but there's no fines, I believe. Oh, that makes sense. I understand. And so, at some point, just for everybody to think about it, at some point, when we are asked to do a site visit. I want a signed release stating that we have the right to do that with a phone number to a contact person so that one of us or any of us can go to that person and say, hey, look, I'd like to visit your site today instead of waiting for everyone to come together. If I'm free on a Tuesday or a Wednesday and I just want to get a cursory look of it, I'd like to be able to go to the owner or the representative and say, hey, I'd like to come there. Can you meet? Instead of, you know, I went to someone's house and, and talked to her very kindly mm -hmm. and left. The next thing I know, she called the police, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't want that to happen again. Right. So yeah. I would just suggest, I do have, I brought a site authorization form. Beautiful. So maybe, Steve, I know that yeah. when they file, that that is actually yeah, granting us permission. Be careful with the open meeting law. So that's why the commission, it's good to schedule site walks like you did today. Have but a public hearing that you're going to be going at, at a particular point in time. So when you're if, when the commission, three of you, two of you show up at a meeting, you can't talk. Sure, I was by myself. But even still, you shouldn't be talking, convincing about the meetings. I can talk because I'm the agent. Well, I, I'd like to see that in writing. I'm not going to challenge that, but I'd like to see that rule. Okay. Could you sign those, please? Because and sometimes you meet somebody downtown and you want to talk about something. It's not illegal. So if it's policy, well, we'll discuss that. Well, when it's a negative. There's, when there's a negative, sure. we want to be careful. Sure. When it's a positive, I don't think there's any re Nobody cares, repercussions. Right? But we should always work through Steve, even if it takes a couple of days. We should always work for Steve with Steve. Right, but I and just want Steve will contact the person. I agree as far as the talking to him uh, and, and alerting him and all that stuff. If I see somebody downtown who wants to talk about a project, I'm not going to wait and talk to Steve. I'm going to see what's on their mind. Well, we're talking about violations, yeah. potential about violations. Okay. We're not talking about anything else. Got gotcha. you. So when they file for their permit, does that automatically, and you can maybe ask town council, automatically give us permissions to it does. go to the site? It's typically. And okay. And so we I need something that's but referencing you don't that. You rolling up in front of people, you know, and then, you know, usually they're fine. Right. I would. Let them, let them know we're coming. Yeah, it Absolutely, but that's why I want on that form a contact number because if I'm out and about and I'm driving by a site walk, mm -hmm. then I want to be able to do that. And whatever the decision that we collectively make, I want to give a copy of that to police department so that they're aware of what the policy is. Okay. Well, we'll we can maybe discuss that at the next meeting. We can sure. have it on the um, under discussion. But could you sign those two for me before I forget? And Steve, do you know anything about the Love and Manzi Way? A site inspection was made on 331, 2018. Yeah, it was the one with the dog kennel, and you wanted to take one side of the dog kennel down that was in the woods. Okay, could we double check on that if it had been voted or not? Voted? Uh, if you've if you done the work? Or? Yeah, and if it's good to sign because it's still in the folder. Can I give these back? Um, yep. Give them back. Okay, so um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Aye. So moved. Oh, wait, let's keep okay, going. So this is fun. So moved. Second, anybody? Second, yeah. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.